Hello guys, this is the Slaughter Guy here and welcome to my new series which is called Behind the Scenes. Now, this is a really, really weird one, but I wanted to bring you guys some of the other persons who are just in the Slaughter community and doing stuffs with like pretty much Star Wars The Old Republic. So, our first guest is none other than Star Wars The Old Republic Central, or better known as Sam. How are you, Sam? It, it sounds so weird when you say it like that. Let, let's just stick with Swotor Central. And I'm good, by the way. So thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stick with Swotor Central if you're saying that. So yeah, uh, in case someone didn't know you, like he's living under a rock, but just to like uh, a clarification, introduce yourself. Introduce myself. Okay, so my name is Sam, as you said. Uh, also known as Swotor Central, I guess a very well-established community member. Um, I make videos on YouTube, uh, guides, that kind of thing, and I'm just overall a Swotor player who likes playing the game. So there you go. That's what I wanted to hear, and probably a lot of people. Now, before we getting into other Star Wars The Old Republic questions, which probably a lot of people want, I want to know your history about the games and everything. So first off, how did you get this thing called gaming industry? So how did you start playing games in general and things like that? I mean, like, how far back do you want me to go? Because <laughs> that's, that's a start, pretty big question. Just start at the beginning. Oh, God. Um, okay, so probably going all the way back to when I was about six, maybe seven years old. And just since then, ever since, like, seeing consoles like the PlayStation 1, um, I've always been into gaming. Like I've always liked the look of it. I've always liked the feel of a controller in my hand and just playing a game. And um, saying that though, and this might make some people happy because I'm not that old, but you know I'm still fairly old, I guess. I mean I'm 22, so you know. Um, the first console that I ever owned for myself when I was a kid was a Sega Saturn, and wow. I remember playing the game called Clockwork Night non-stop. I remember absolutely loving that game. Wow, that is kind of an old game. Well, oh, yeah. uh, then the next question is, uh, like, how did you get your, or when did you get your first PC, like your proper PC? How old are you and what games did you play in that time? Good question, very good question. Um, so I got my very first PC in June of 2012 or it might have been the month before and i specifically got the pc to play star wars the old republic and the game oh. that i was playing when i got the pc was of course star wars the old republic and at the time i think mass effect 3 had released recently and i also got mass effect 3 for the pc as well and i played that that is interesting so in case if you guys didn't know these are some questions that i actually no one knows or maybe some close personal friends with Sam, but even I didn't know these questions, so you guys will be surprised, and I'm gonna be surprised as well on these. So, uh, you said you have uh, a Sega. Now, the next question is, what kind of consoles did you have before you had a PC? Obviously, you're a console player or gamer, yeah. I guess, so what consoles did you have? back in the day and um, so obviously i started with the sega saturn yep. and I, I don't actually remember what happened to that i'm like you know i was way too young to re to remember what happened to that eventually and um, but after that point it was um one of my parents who had the playstation one mm -hmm. um which i obviously played because it was in the house it was the house console and um, eventually when i was about 12 actually no a bit younger Maybe 11, 11 years old is when I got the PlayStation 2, which was my own personal console. And it was the silver slimline one. And I remember I was like so happy when I got it. And my mum bought me like a whole ton of games for a whole different ton of games. Um, namely being games like Destroy All Humans and Need for Speed Most Wanted. You know, like oh, some of the yes. biggest games that were around in that time period. And we're going back to like, what, 2006 or something right now. I don't know, maybe even earlier. Um, but yes, so I, I had the PlayStation 2 for myself first. And then eventually, um, for whatever reason, I no longer had the PlayStation 2. I don't know, maybe it broke or something. And I moved over to Xbox, the original Xbox console. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember this because I was 13 years old and I used my own money. Well, I say my own money, money that I was given for my birthday um, to, to buy this Xbox console. And with it 
came a bunch of games and this is yeah. where you're going to love the most right because one of the games that came with it was knights of the old republic 2 <laughs> and i actually i didn't know what that game was i just knew it was a star wars game i knew nothing more about it and i didn't play it like it was there with the console but i didn't play it first to begin with i was playing things like halo yeah. um and time splitters uh, i think it was time splitters 2 absolutely loved that game oh, yeah. and then eventually when i put the knights of the old republic disc in and i got into it and i started playing it and i was like this this is awesome and i was like you, you have to make your own lightsaber you have to find the pieces i was like what it was like it's probably the best rpg experience i'd ever had in any game ever like literally that game blew my mind and i played it non-stop and then eventually i bought knights of the old republic one because of course you know knights of the old republic 2 was one that i played first and you know i don't think it matters which one you play first I and mean, you might get a little bit yeah. confused in two with some of the lot but you know i don't think it really matters it is and then just from that point onwards um i had an xbox 360 when that came out and i played games like grand theft auto like your typical teenage games yeah. i suppose games that i probably wouldn't play now um and then eventually it just led up to the pc mm -hmm. uh that is really really like interesting to hear about this xbox and kotor thing because back in the day i had a really good friend of mine who just uh after school at the weekends we going into his, uh, his mom's place and pretty much that's what that was our like sanctuary like we played so much games back in the day i don't had an xbox uh I think I stocked on the PlayStation 2 as well and played like GTA San Andreas and all of those kind of games as well. But, yeah, yeah, the classics. Yeah, the classics pretty much. And uh, then I decided to go uh, with him and play a lot. And we started to play like also not just uh, uh, RPG games, but we loved RPG games so much. Like, I don't know if you know the game called Baldur's Gate. Uh, that is like kind of an old game as well. No, I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, that is also like a original like RPG sort of thing. But we played like Star Wars Racer Revenge, which was really, really awesome. And uh, Star Wars uh, Battlegrounds, I believe, where you can like pretty much uh, destroy, I mean, pretty much fighting with vehicles, I believe. It had tanks in it and something like that, a lot of stuffs. And then he showed me this game called KOTOR 2 as well. And I was like, what is this? And uh, he told me about it, and he was in Korriban in that time, and pretty much, like, discovering the place in Korriban. And I don't know too much of the story, pretty much like I played a demo. And I started to play, and I also instantly fell in love with it. Like, that was awesome. Like, you had a lightsaber, you have companions to choose, you have to choose to kill or save or whatever. I will definitely buy it. When, with, when this was came out, he said three days ago immediately go into the store and I had a PC but I don't play too much other than Counter-Strike in that time because I was an eSport player and, yeah, yeah. and I decided to screw it I'm gonna go ask my mom to say I wanted to buy this KOTOR 2 game and I bought it I bought the original free disc version of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 the Sith Lords and Damn. I'm so proud of it that I still have it and wow. and the really funny thing is, I finished KOTOR 2 before KOTOR 1 as well, and I started to play KOTOR 1, and then I, I, I stuck in, uh, what is the place where you're going in the first time, as soon as you crashed? I don't know if it's Terrace or... Paragus to... Mining Facility? Yeah, but it's close to Terrace. Oh, the, the, the planet that you, you crash on. Yeah. Uh, ooh, God. Good question. Very I, good question. I think it's Terrace. What was that called? No, it's not. Oh, wait, is this the original Knights of the Republic game? Yeah, one? yeah, that, Republic yeah it's the original, the first one. Okay, the first one, yeah, it's Taurus. Yeah. yeah, so as soon as you land in Taurus, there was a door where you needed to go in as an undercover, like you needed to use the try and wear armor set, I'm calling this one or yeah. one, but still yeah. the try and wear armor set, to go into the door. And I was so stuck to that part, and I literally said stop, and I went back into KOTOR 2 and finished it once more. And <laughs> until I was getting more groaned and uh, learned more English, then I started to play against Star Wars The Old Republic 1. And I think I finished Star Wars The Old Republic 1 five times, and The, the Old Republic 2 ten times or eight times, I believe, something like that. With yep, all of the yep. options and things like that. 
So that was fun, but still, uh, I wanted to ask you, you more since you started to talk about games. So <laughs> let's ask. I wanted to ask, what was your first games like? Not just game in general, games like that you played. Okay, so obviously the earliest one that I can remember is Clockwork Knight. That yeah. is literally the earliest one. Um, the next ones that I remember are on PlayStation 1, and it's um, I believe it's called Ape Escape, um, which was a really fun game. To be honest, you used like, the analog sticks to control like a net or something. It'd be like puzzles, almost like a Super Mario game, but you had to catch monkeys, and it was really cool. It was like a, almost like a platformer. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, what other games? I think there was, there was like this pirate ship game. Honestly, I couldn't tell you the name of it. Um, and maybe, hmm, that's, that's a good question. I'm, I'm have a, actually having difficulty remembering, to then, be honest. Then I'm going to go into another one, which is the, obviously you played a lot of games. That is obvious. But yeah. what was the best games that you remember that that game has actually impacted you the most or you remember it so much, just like KOTOR 2? Or something like similar to Kotor 2. That is like uh, that was really game changing. You really enjoyed it, and then you wanted to remember it for the rest of your life. You wanted to show it to your kids and everything. And that game was awesome. That really felt like good and impact you and made you a better person or something like that. What kind of games? Okay. Was this? So I'll do free, oh. free, free games that I know specifically okay. which have definitely had an impact on definitely with my opinion and my preference with games and. Um, so I'm, I'm really glad you asked that question anyways, because a, a memory just popped into my head and it was like, hey, remember me? Um, uh, Dreamcast, remember that? Oh, remember yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I remember this, the uh, the Sonic game. I think it was maybe just called Sonic. Mm-hmm. And the alien that you fight at the beginning and it's open world, like vastly open world, or at least it was for its time. Like that is definitely a game I remember. And like the adventure that you could have, the open worldness like just like how big and wide it was to explore that that definitely had an influence over what games i liked moving forward from that point Mm -hmm. and moving on on with that like and this this kind of just reinforces what i've just said (laughs) and you're gonna love this and because if we're including this into consoles as well like handheld consoles so pokemon games like seriously right so you know your game boy color i remember that i had pokemon yellow um pokemon gold pokemon silver yeah. those games were a huge part of my childhood and then growing up obviously i got the nintendo ds and some of the later pokemon games like uh, diamond and pearl i remember those i got those uh, for christmas i believe and obviously last not last but certainly not least is uh knights of the old republic has also had a very big influence i think those last two in particular pokemon and star wars have actually had a lot to do with me and gaming you probably you probably played like as well as me. You played on the Game Boy Advance, I believe. I think it was announced on that, or I don't know, something like that. Originally, the Game Boy Color, the handheld with the batteries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then yeah, there yeah. was the Game Boy Advance that also had the batteries, but I had the um, the flip one, the one that you could charge. Yes, yes. I pretty much played the, the Game Boy Color Advanced, and I played like, there was, I literally don't know how many Pokemon versions for that. Like, I know yellow, gold, silver, fire, with charizard in it uh and blastoise in it pikachu in it i could name them all i really could i i really can't as well but there were so many i remember that playing no i'm saying i could i could name them all for you if you wanted me to okay don't (laughs) (laughs) no we'll be here forever yeah i know uh but pretty much i i played that a lot as well like how do you remember that it's really impacted you that pokemon game really in fact impacted you that you can pretty much like name all of the pokemon games on the game boy advance or something um i could definitely name a lot of pokemon to you definitely like pokemons in general like uh like yep. name their like, evolutions their types what they're weak against what they're good against did you watch what the level TV they evolve well. what, what items you need to evolve them and um, as for the movies and the series and whatnot obviously i've watched the original series that yep. was absolutely amazing everything in between that leading up to the fourth gen i believe i'm very blurry mm-hmm. with but everything past fourth gen i'm very very familiar with that is not i actually didn't know that so that's glad <laughs> to know you uh but let's get back to star wars uh because i wanted to ask you 
because obviously a lot of people know that you're playing Star Wars games as well because you're pretty much focused on Star Wars games because your of name course. is Swotor Central. But yeah. what games did you play? Because we know you played uh, Star Wars Battlefront, the originals yeah. and the new one as well. Uh, yeah. You're playing Star Wars The Old Republic right now, and you played Kotor 1 and 2, but what other Star Wars games you played? Um, pretty much all the ones that were on PC, um, I haven't played, except Star Wars The Old Republic. Um, all of the ones that were on console, I've definitely played, so like Jedi Academy, Jedi Outcast, um, I've definitely played those, but there's still a lot of games that I haven't had the chance to play i guess um i guess I, I could play them if i wanted to i've just not had the chance so like empire at war mm-hmm. i've never played it like i know i've been told so many times that it's an amazing game it but is. i've just i've never played it and i earn it as well i earn it on steam but i've never played it and um, star wars republic commander i've obviously oh. played that that was available on console yeah. um trying to think of the star wars games i think there was this this racing one is it like star super wars bombard racer. racing something like that and pod racing the pod what was that for uh, I think that might have actually been on the Dreamcast, a pod racing game. That was that was definitely pretty damn cool. I, I remember liking that a lot. That was uh, Star Wars Pod Racer, and after that, on yeah. the original Xbox, came out Star Wars Racer Revenge, which I actually own on my PS4, like the remastered version, or not like oh, the remastered. God. I'm gonna have to look into that. Um, yeah, that that is so awesome. If if you ever coming into like a honeymoon or something like that, definitely just come into Hungary and check my place and then you we can play uh, Star Wars Racer Revenge. It's still in co-op and still we can play together. Still you can customize uh, if you wanted to go for like uh, top speed or things like that with Anakin or uh, pretty much like a lot of grinds to get like Sebulba or something like that. That's yeah, really, yeah. really hard. But uh, I wanted to go into other uh, topics as well because we talk so okay. much about Star Wars The Old Republic. But I know you love Dragon Ball as well. Oh when yes. Did you, when did this came out? Like when did the the Dragon Ball fanboy started to rise? Okay, right. So let me give it to you straight. I've known about Dragon Ball for like the longest time. I've always known about it. I've tried watching it several times, and every time I've gone to the original series, I've been put off every time just because of the art style. The voicing it's always put me off and i've just never really been interested obviously like probably just about everybody in the entire world knows that you know, everybody knows of like super saiyan you know goku <laughs> never loses blah 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 we all know like the typical stuff right yeah but then a few months ago actually it might be more than a few, maybe about six months ago um me and my friend mark was talking telly you know him as yep. telly um and obviously he's into dragon ball quite a lot and i don't know we, we got into this just this um discussion about discussion about anime and um watching subtitles versus dub and i don't know how it came about exactly but basically um what i found out after that is that dragon ball z Mm -hmm. which is the series after the original series which is the one i couldn't watch just because it kept putting me off and that dragon ball z had actually remastered their entire series and with this new series called dragon ball z kai now i know a lot of people are going to get triggered like well you need to watch the original well i assure you (laughs) that I have now. <laughs> um, but basically, I went to Dragon Ball Z Kai and I watched the first couple of episodes and I was yep. like, you know what? This is pretty good. I'm just going to keep watching. I feel like it's building up to something. And boy, <laughs> did it build up to something. <laughs> and that something was pretty damn awesome. Okay? Yeah, the arrival of the Saiyans on Earth. <sighs> oh my God. And then the Freezer Saga on Planet Nam. Oh. Oh my god, the freezer! <laughs> Honestly, everything that happened would just—it blew me away. It was completely new to me. It's completely different from Star Wars. Completely different from you know anything else that I played. Completely different from Pokemon, Sonic, anything like that, right? Mm-hmm. And this, this new series that I, that was now absolutely fresh to me was just—it it pulled me in. Like if there was Dragon more Dragon Ball games out there, I would play the hell out of them. Like I assure you of that. And now. I have actually watched every single Dragon Ball episode in existence. And wow. in the latest um, Dragon Ball series that's out is called Dragon Ball Super. Yeah. And because they released this in two versions, they have the subtitle version, which is Japanese, and then they have the um, the dubbed version, which is English. But you see, the English version is like 60, maybe 70 episodes behind the subtitled version. Oh. So I converted over to subtitles, and I've been watching full-on dragon ball 
in Japanese for the past 90 or so episodes. <laughs> wow, that is crazy. How, yeah. how old then you when you started to watch Dragon Ball? When was like the the first like episode and things like that when when like really <sighs> impact or let's just say when was your favorite episode? You you obviously bring up memories, but do you have a specific like a favorite episode where you just pretty much like saved and every time you just uh, wanted to eat something and then I want to watch a movie but there is no movie. Oh, instead I'm just gonna watch this episode like 300 times again. <laughs> uh, it's it's really hard to narrow down um, I don't know if you if you've had this before or not but there is just so many moments in the in the entire Dragon Ball saga that amaze me like I could rewatch the entire thing and I just I wouldn't be bored at all I'd love every single moment of it like I honestly I couldn't pinpoint a single moment for you and say that that's my best because there are just too many um to pinpoint um I, I can tell you one of my favorites. One of my favorites is definitely going to be um, where Goku goes Super Saiyan for the first time. Like that's oh, obviously yeah. a complete memorable moment for absolutely everybody. Um, but I guess that one stands out to me the most. But I, I I can't choose that as like my top favorite. I just can't. Like there are just too many moments. I um, I, I totally and, agree. Yeah, and it's like you know, saying going back to like my earliest memory of it was maybe when I was about eleven or twelve. I think I remember maybe watching it back then, and but obviously I don't really remember it that well, mm -hmm. and so I, I couldn't really speak on that either. At least you know, it's like I said, I knew of it. I just never actually watched it up until like the past six months. <laughs> <laughs> that that is really crazy to hear it. Like in general. Uh, I never thought you were like that big of a fanboy like to watch like every single episode of Dragon Ball oh, yes. and things like that. That is crazy. Uh, I wanted to go into like more hobbies as well if you like. Sure. Uh, I know you have, I know you love Star Wars and I know you love Dragon Ball. But what like other like let's just say in overall things that you like so for example what kind of hobbies do you have what's your favorite like movies or do you have favorite books or music or things like that let's just go for first of all for hobbies what kind of hobbies do you have other than like making content of youtube because that is that is actually a hobby so a lot of people consider it as a job but for us like as a small youtube channel like me or sam we are not pewdiepie to have 50 whatever million <laughs> subscribers or even 1 million or even 500k we just like 17k and pretty much we cannot like live with this like uh, pretty much we can but let's just let's just ignore this and uh, let's go back to the topic what hobbies do you have it's a it's a good question but it's also difficult to answer and i know i'm gonna probably say that quite a lot this entire time um i don't really have any hobbies that stand out apart from what I already do because I'm pretty much too focused on what it is that I do currently um but I guess if I had to name one it's just just going to be playing games I suppose just playing games is my hobby yeah <laughs> I guess you could also consider my my uh my pc a hobby because I do like to play around with it and upgrade it when I can and I, I actually enjoy doing that that is, that is also like a hobby as well a lot of people calling it let's uh, let's go to uh movies let's just pick one of your favorite movies that you love uh, first off what kind of what type of movie do you enjoy the most like action horror drama or whatever hmm I like movies with a plot twist so obviously I have like some all-time favorite movies but the movies that I really, 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 really love to watch are movies like, um, for example, The Da Vinci Code, right? Because oh, yeah. they've got amazing plot twists and they actually go in depth with a lot of um, factual history, even if some of it is exaggerated. Um, but I like I like movies like that, that, ones that have a twist, something that you don't expect to so see, like, especially when you're new to it as well. So you really don't expect so to like, see So uh, like Inception is in here as well? I, I guess. I mean, I did. I don't mind Inception, but I don't think it's a movie I'd watch more so, than once. <laughs> so pretty much like uh, like the thriller slash uh, uh, mystical thing with a plot plot twist, pretty much. Like yes. uh, okay, just name one of the movies that you actually love. Don't need to be like uh, this like mystery slash thriller. Just pick ones that you actually remember or just again impacted you the most. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to be very typical, and I'm going to say Pokemon Movie 1, definitely. It's been oh. a favorite since my childhood. Yeah. Um, but secondly, what stands out to me the most, and this may or may not surprise you, but I do prefer movies with this kind of presentation, um, is Pulp Fiction. Oh, yes. Pulp Fiction? Oh, of course. There we go. Of course. Who doesn't see Movies it? like Pulp Fiction and um, Snatch. Movies like Snatch. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, let's go into, like books i don't know if you read any books i probably read star wars books as well i think right um i actually and this is really gonna surprise you i'm not uh big on reading it is something i want to get into but it's something that i've not really done like i've not actually read any of the star wars books if i'm being honest i think i've had some comic some comics when i was younger and i think i maybe remember reading the kayadi mundi book but i honestly i couldn't name you a single word in that entire book so I was you just actually too long ago. so you actually don't have a book like no. like a star wars that is really shocking nope. that is shocking like i i as a star wars fan who probably at the time right now seeing the brag gam or probably you see iron maiden and things like that but there will be getting a room tour there is a corner specifically to star wars and there is lego uh there is even a, of course the malgus there is even a menu like a, a movie menu for star wars episode 7 and back in the day star wars episode 2 when it was released on cinemas and i have a whole reliquy of Star Wars and I think I have around 30 or 35 books back in the throne trilogy I have it probably you heard about Jesus the, the throne trilogy uh, I have those I have like a, a behind the scenes book about like pictures and things like that about Star Wars episode one okay uh, so just for a comparison here because you're naming like so much stuff that you've got yeah this, what I'm holding on camera now, this is literally the only piece of Star Wars decor that I have in my room at this moment in time. And it's just, it literally just cost me a quid, okay? <laughs> this is a small, cheap, plastic figurine of the ghost, yeah? Oh, yeah. The ship, the ghost. That is yeah. literally it. And it sits right there. And that's all I've got. So compared to what you have, um, I think yours is a little bit more impressive. Yeah, I, I am a, I'm, I'm, I can call myself a Star Wars nerd a little bit. I'm actually wearing, uh, I don't know if you probably see it or not, but it's already weird. This is an ATRT. Uh, I think the big one is called the ATRT, right? Or ATAT? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, this is yeah. The this walkers, is the, the yeah the yeah the eighty yeah, yeah. eighty. It's already written on the shirt, but I'm so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> so yeah, this shirt was originally uh, released only on America, and my father gave it to me back when I was nine years old, and Damn. it's 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 fitted me a little bit like short, and it's it's yeah it's kind of like old as you're probably seeing it. It's like. Not all of the colors have been perfect. It, it is around for like, I don't know, 25 years, this shirt. And I'm, I'm really, really like watching this shirt. And even though if my girlfriend touching it, I say, stay away right now. Go away <laughs> right now. So, yeah. Get away from my stuff. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, the last thing is music. What kind of music do you listen to? I listen to a very wide variety of music. I'm not picky at all with music, so long as it, as it's good and it has a good melody, something that you can just easily listen to without being distracted. That's mm -hmm. the kind of music that I like. Like I can't have something, um, how can I put it? Basically just distracting, like distract, because there is distracting music, mm -hmm. music that you can't listen to and do something with at the same time. At least yeah. I'm like that. Um, I guess an example would be like Hollywood and Dead because I like yeah. Hollywood and Dead, but I can't listen to them when I'm doing stuff because I get too distracted because either A, I'm too into the song, I just need to sit there and listen to the song, <laughs> or B, um, literally the vocals and the music going on is just distracting me from what I'm doing. It's just I just can't focus. Um, and C, I'm just probably just wanting to sing so along to it. So pretty much like a try not to sing challenge is probably not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, same goes to like me. most of the music that I like is things like dubstep or chill mm -hmm. step. Like I'll listen to so, a lot of that, especially melodic music. I absolutely love it. But you pick some of your favorite bands that you actually listen. You picked up Hollywood Undead already. So 
that's yeah but I, I, I like hollywood undead i don't specifically like all of their songs um a few of them for sure and the one that stands out to me the most is again it's gonna be like really typical is one called levitate but just because it's catchy and it's just yeah. easy to listen to um and i'm actually glad you brought up the killers because i think they're pretty underrated to be honest i don't think enough people listen to them uh, so I, I do i don't mind the killers yeah i don't think a lot of people a lot of people now probably focusing uh on like main bands like i i'm gonna sound a little bit like i don't know how should i say it but cheesed or something like that but a lot of people just forgetting like really big like legends who made so much in the music industry i'm not following the music industry don't 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 know uh, too no, much of it i'm i'm not doing that either don't worry uh but things like i don't know if you remember back in the day when michael jackson died uh michael yeah. jackson made some iconic songs like the beat it and the trailer and stuff like that we do yeah. we ne we recognize it so much but as soon as he died uh immediately a lot of people get it at attention and everybody just wanted to go for a michael jackson re uh tribute concert or something like that same goes to linkin park right now rest in peace chester up there uh probably you heard or listened linkin park at least of course once. of course definitely so, uh, three weeks ago, uh, they were here the first time ever in Hungary. They were here. And uh, three weeks ago, uh, me and my friend decided to go in there because we obviously love Linkin Park. That was our childhood back when I was 14, 15 years old. Hybrid yeah. Terry album and things like that. All of them. Oh, I, yeah. I, I remember it. And then three weeks later, uh, or yeah, last week pretty much, we went into uh vacation and then my friend uh sees uh, catching up twitter and things like that what's up and then he's seeing chester died and i was like Haha, that is fake like probably not seeing that and then the tweets started to move up like to to 5k to 10k to 200k and i was like okay this is literally it like he died and i'm i'm thank god i i, I went into that concert to watch it because probably not a lot of people are gonna like and never watched like the original Linkin Park group. And uh, as I said, the hype goes up as soon as like someone dies. I don't know if you realize that or something like that. But yeah, but I, I think it's only natural for something like that to happen. It's, you know, these people have a lot of fans, especially Chester. Yeah. So when something like that does happen, I think it's only natural for the fans to react in a way where they want to interact with what they had to somehow pay their respects or somehow pay tribute because there really isn't a lot that i could do or even you could do to pay your respects it's not like you could go to and um, like his funeral or something and say yeah. some words so like sometimes just i don't know buying some of his music or you know maybe just posting a tweet that's it's like usually the way it to is. go it is so uh let's get on to another topic which you uh, mentioned it in your dragon ball topic uh you mentioned mark telly right okay so how did you know telly or when did you know telly or when did you first met telly pretty much <laughs> okay so from when i first knew telly to when i first met him that's two different stories yeah and um, so basically the deal is when i was 16 i went into college mm. and i met my friend who people know as oak wolf but he might not be familiar in my community and people won't be familiar with him anyways and basically adam my friend at college introduced me to some other people who i had i had not met in person but you know just on games like they were just like a circle of friends who played things like daisy and seven days mm -hmm. to die and sometimes even minecraft you know just a bunch of different games and i talked to them on mumble if you know of mumble the, the voice app thing that yep. you could get on your pc and that's how i was introduced to mark also known as telly um met him on on mumble and just since then that point we've just always talked and because he lived so close by and because he he was a close friend of somebody who i had made friends with at college we eventually ended up meeting and you know obviously you know we're, we're just friends so it's just really natural for us and um, but at the same time something that's gonna maybe surprise you is that when i first met mark on mumble i mean not in person and um, he didn't know of star wars Old public and i had already been playing for a few months and oh. it was me, and I take a lot of pride in this, it was me that got Mark into Star Wars Old Republic. It was me that convinced him to download it and play it. And he has played 
ever since, just as long as I have. That is really interesting. I actually didn't know that, but since you mentioned it, uh, and probably a lot of people familiar with the, the behind the scenes with Tally. So the question here is what other things have you done outside in Star Wars The Old Republic or in, in Star Wars The Old Republic or just in games in general? What kind of uh, things you have? Obviously, he is a close friend uh, yeah. for, for you. So you're probably drinking too much sometimes, which is probably obvious. But what are the not, things? Not often at all. <laughs> Um, just like I said, just like some of the other games that I mentioned, like Seven Days to Die, Rust was also a good one that we played, um, and Minecraft, believe it or not, we did play that a few years ago, um, especially Mark, he was really into his Minecraft, but for a different reason than what you would think, not like a hardcore mm -hmm. Minecraft player or anything. Um, yeah, just like general games. I remember when Grand Theft Auto V came out, we all played that as a group of friends online, which was really fun to do. Um, yeah, mostly survival games, you know, like Seven Days to Die, Rust, to Desi. That kind of thing. So, uh, let's get into Star Wars The Old Republic. Uh, first of all, how did you get to know Star Wars The Old Republic? Because you mentioned earlier you bought a PC because of Star Wars The Old Republic before. Yep. You actually don't had a PC or something like that at all? Or how did you... Didn't know? have a PC. And I didn't have a console at that point either. That because basically, also without going into it too much, um, around the time when I was 14, 15 years old, I had a lot, and I mean a lot happened to me, a lot of stuff that wasn't good for me. Um, but basically the general gist is, when I was 15 years old, I was living in Scotland at the time. I was only there for a couple of weeks. And I discovered these videos on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, these videos that we know as the hope cinematic and the deceived cinematic. I discovered those and I was like, whoa, that that's awesome. <laughs> I was like, what is this and how do I get it? Um, and also, yeah, I discovered that it was Star Wars Old Republic and it's a game that's currently in development or it's going to be released at said time. And then later on, when I moved back to my home, which is in Yorkshire, so I won't say the exact place, um, basically I was, I was looking around the shops and then I saw Star Wars The Old Republic and the actual physical discs in the game store and I was looking at it and I was like, I, I need this game. It's like, I need to have this game. It's like, it's only on PC and it's killing me. It's like, so I, I needed to find a way to get a PC. Um, luckily enough for me though, Louise, who is currently about to walk in, I think, but anyways, um, basically when I was around 16, yes, 16, I just turned, um, Louise's dad runs like a, a computer business, his own established little thing. And he sold me a PC, very cheap. It wasn't a brilliant PC, but it was a PC nonetheless, and that's what I wanted. And it was on my 16th birthday, um, or at least I bought it for my 16th birthday. Um, and that's when I started playing Star Wars Order Book. Nice. I, as I said, I didn't know too much of this history. Probably a lot of you don't know this. Uh, let's get into another one, which was, uh, what was your first uh, character that you played in Star Wars The Old Republic, and which server did you play back in the day? The exact server name, I couldn't tell you. I can't remember the name of the server. All I remember is that it was dead. Um, and obviously when it merged, it merged yeah. with the Red Eclipse. So if anybody remembers what, server, what servers were merged with the Red Eclipse, I was on one of those to begin with. Um, the very first character that I ever made was, in fact, the one that I still play to this day, one that is currently called Swotor Central, my Sith Assassin. I knew I was going to pick that class from the moment I saw the um, Choose Your Class trailer, you know, Sith class progression trailer, anyways, mm -hmm. one for the Sith Inquisitor. I saw the Assassin, I was like, I need it, that's why I'm playing. And I didn't want to choose that because of Darth Maul or anything, I just saw it and I was like, this looks epic. That is the class I'm choosing when I get into this game. So that is really, really good to mention it because the first class that I actually ever played was uh, my guardian. Still, it has the original name. Uh, Appler. Appler, it is. I didn't know, it, it was Swater Central was the original name of that character or did you rename no, it? No. What was, was the name? The original then? name. It's only ever, ever had two names. Obviously, now it's called Swater Central. Um, okay, so some people watching this video may or may not recognize his name but obviously before i was a, a a figure i guess whatever you want to call it on youtube i was well known in the community anyways because i ran a few guilds and i ran a lot of pug raids and i taught a lot of new players how to do things and um, but i was also an ass like i was you know i wasn't the friendliest person um, and yeah. 
which I obviously taken a pride in. And I, I like to think I've taken a, a better step since then. Um, but uh, it was called Reaper Mage. That was oh. the name. And that used to be the name that I kind of went by with all of my characters. So I had like Reaper Mage, Reaper Jug, um, Reaper Arya from obviously from Game of Thrones, Arya. Um, but you don't watch that, so you wouldn't know, Peter, would you? Um, and then we've got, oh, who else? Reaper, did I say Reaper Jug already? Yeah. Well, anyways, there was a few as like Reaper Sneak. And uh, some people might recognize those names. So uh, you picking up so many memories about uh, the names and things like that. Just pick me a few of your best memories in Star Wars The Old Republic. Because you playing this same as well, uh, like five years. I'm playing this for five years, you playing this for five years. You have a ton of memory to Star Wars The Old Republic. Just oh, yeah. bring one of your best memories or just one or two good stories that you have about star wars the old republic okay so i'll give you two and they kind of relate to each other so now there's a difference between playing an mmo for the first time and then learning what an mmo actually is right mm -hmm. and how it actually plays right so obviously the, from the very first time i played star wars the old republic up until the rise of the hook cartel i was what we would now call a very casual story based player mm -hmm. um an autoholic as well i suppose and it wasn't until just after the rise of the Hut Cartel where I, I began to get into um, operations and end game content. That's when I started like discovering how those things worked, like how gearing progression worked. Mm -hmm. Like when I took it upon myself to actually dive into those things, like I, I never actually really joined a guild. So one of the biggest moments for me was when I finally did that. And I did that with a particular guild, which I won't say the name of just in case. <laughs> And um, because obviously there was a lot of things happening and I don't want to trigger anybody. And, um, but basically that guild brought me into that environment and showed me how to, um, DPS with my assassin and that they showed me how to do my rotation. They told me what stats were good for me. And, you know, I loved it. Like just diving into that was like a whole new experience from what I already had played within the game. It's like I was entering a whole different game. And obviously I started out with the Tenet Evolve and then Rise of the Hook Cartel mm -hmm. later brought Dread Fortress and Dread Palace. And now Dread Fortress is like my favorite operation <laughs> of all time. So that's definitely going to be probably the biggest. Actually, no, actually, no, it's definitely second biggest. Second biggest. This next one is the biggest. So obviously I took that step into operations, blah, blah, blah. Things happened. Uh, eventually ended up just being uh, me on my own with a couple of friends that I knew like Telly, right? Yeah. And you, you, you'll probably have this experience as well, sir. So when you're a fresher player to like operations and that kind of thing, you don't really know the tactics for everything. You're not the best player, blah, blah, blah. You know, that was me yeah. and Telly back in the day. These days, obviously completely different, but back in the day, that was me and Telly. And, you know, we're trying to do operation runs and people are saying, no, no, you, you need to have the achievement for this story mode operation. Otherwise I'm not letting you join. And obviously that annoyed us and we're like, oh, well, I guess, okay, whatever. It's your group. And, but eventually, you, you know, we were doing pug runs and things like that. And we just, we wasn't getting anywhere. So we took it upon ourselves. Like we, we said to ourselves, right, we're going to turn this around. Like we're actually, we're going to investigate these operations and we're going to see how they work. We're going to gear ourselves properly and see how that works. We're going to learn the mechanics and, you know, and move, like teach people how to do that is what I'm looking mm -hmm. for. And so what we did was, is we created a guild. And um, for anybody who wants to know the name of that guild, that guild name was Game of Clones. And basically what we did was, is we made this guild to bring in people that were experiencing the same thing as us. People who could not get into operations because they hadn't done them before. People who couldn't do certain things because nobody had given them to the chance to do the certain thing. We created this guild because not all of the end game community, but some of the end game community had a very not warm welcome at all for anybody it was like you know if you don't want you doing then we don't want you go away we're not willing to teach you and that's that irritated us so we took it upon ourselves to teach ourselves how to do these things and that's exactly what we did with that guild we brought in new people and we cleared operations story mode easy easy we go into story mode now and we laugh at the mechanics obviously everybody laughs at the mechanics because <laughs> you don't even need to abide by half of them now since 4.0 and but even before that we were laughing at them 
And eventually we moved up to hard mode progression or now known as veteran mode progression. And we cleared operations such as Templar Sacrifice. Or to be more clear, actually, we didn't clear Revan. You know, we weren't that good, but you know, we, we were still good and we cleared the other bosses. And we cleared some in Ravagers. We completely finished Dread Palace. We finished Dread Fortress, Scum and Villainy, Terror from Beyond. We cleared all of the other operations, just except like the later ones, like the Ravagers and Templar Sacrifice when they came out. So, um, so we did really well for ourselves and that was new players that was fresh people who didn't know how to play the game or its core core mechanics of the mm -hmm. game we taught those people how to do those things and we proved we proved that that those things were possible and the reason i said earlier that i used to be a bit of an ass is because i used to be a bit of an ass because of those mm -hmm. things that happened right so i don't know if you've had this experience but sometimes when people who were i don't know i guess you could say more knowledgeable hard had a lot more experience than me, maybe in Nim Raiden or something. When those people came to me and they said, hey, you're not as good as us. We carried you through that. It was easy. We oh, could have done it without you. Yes. Like those people really, really, I don't want to say got to me because, you know, it's not like I was there just weeping on the floor, but they triggered me to the point where I would just lash out at them. Like I would really lash out. It's like, no, that is not the case at all. Like if you come to my guild and you experience and witness the things that we've done, like that's not the case at all like at all and eventually we proved it even more because some of the guilders were willing to do nightmare and mm. um, but also we couldn't get a progression team together so we took it to um the fleet chat i'm like hey let's pug some nightmare ops because it's going to be insane and it's going to be hella funny and that's what it's about it's not always about the serious side of things it's not always about getting that boss on farm for nightmare not for us anyways maybe for some other people that's great that's sure that's if that's your thing that's absolutely fine of course and but you know we we took to the fleet chat doing nightmare pug runs and cleared them i kid you not in a pug run i got my dread fortress timed run i also got my wings i've 100 percent completed dread fortress and um, nightmare side of things from um pug runs and doing that from people who i've interacted with the end game community who i'm who i'm still friends with and people who i know and they were people from the republic side as well because we ended, we ended up switching factions event eventually um, but yes, basically we, we made the guild and that's, that's my memory. Like what we did there and what we proved to ourselves and to everybody else around us was monumental. And that to be fair is definitely part of the reason that I made a YouTube channel. Wow. That the, all I could say about that is wow, to be perfectly honest. So when you actually told me about the this and obviously if you in case if you didn't know this story about uh, the game of clones and things like that uh check out sam's one stream about it when he talked about this story i don't want to get into this story because he already told me and us like in general to the community so what i wanted to ask is you mentioned like uh, you started uh to do progression during dread fortress so before that you not really into like uh, the ops or the progression so you wasn't into like the nova and scum and villainy and terror from beyond and all of those well we did do those like obviously we, we dabbled in those and we eventually did clear them and it was easy for us because they were weren't the most difficult of operations and still aren't you know i'd consider maybe just one boss in terror from beyond being operator nine to be actually mm -hmm. difficult like the rest of them are pretty much just you just roll over them and um, with dread fortress and dread palace it's different like they're two of my favorite operations of all time and um, they actually have mechanics that will absolutely kill you if you do yeah. not abide by them and yeah. each different each different role your dps your healers your tanks they have an actual role to play apart from what they're already doing so your tanks don't just have have to take the damage for you they have to do something else while your dps don't have, just have to do the damage they have to do something else while healers they're not just healing and they also have to do something else and that's what really comes out with dread fortress and dread palace those two those two specifically is what sparked my love for operations so f before that you're not really into like the operations that i as as you like you you've done it but not like the most like I'm not gonna say like hardcore PVE, but like more like serious. You just went in, do a story, and then you're just gonna go back to do PvP or flashpoints or something like that. Okay, so maybe it wasn't um, entirely obvious, but basically what I meant from my previous point was that not only could we do those things, but we could do those as casual players. Every single one of us were casual players. None of us were elitists. 
none of us were hardcore. None of us were raiding every day. None of us were gearing every day. None of us were grinding. We did these things in our own time when we wanted to, when we could. Ah, okay. Now, totally okay. I understand. Yeah, I misunderstand it a little bit, but uh, this is like a really, really nice story. I, I actually never hear this at all, and this is so glad that that you told me and like pretty much now a lot of people who are watching uh, th this story. This is really, really nice. But you mentioned like Dread Fortress, Dread Palace is your favorite opses, and you, you like. Uh, really glad that you achieved that you got the time run and things like that now the next question goes in here what is your best things that you achieved in star wars the old republic so not like an achievement wise but your best thing that you you achieved doesn't really matter if it's like uh, you got uh, an item or things like that just some of the good things that you achieved in in the game well not that it was something that I was set out to do. I didn't set this as a goal, but it's definitely something I'm going to consider as an achievement because I'm proud of it. And that's the fact that, and this is completely excluding YouTube stuff because this was before then, and mm -hmm. um, people knew me, people respected me. When I joined with people, they knew who I was. They immediately said, oh, hey, you know, we know we're going to do this, you're here. And to me, that was one of the biggest achievements I could ever accomplish simply because of everything I talked about with the guild. So to enter like a pug run or a flashpoint or just anything and somebody say, oh, hey, I know this is going to be easy. I recognize you. You're cool. You know, I know many people are going to experience that. But when it happens, it, to me, it feels like an achievement. It feels like I've done something and I've actually had an effect on the community. So pretty much server. you picked up a name for yourself. So, so to speak. Yeah. So that that is your achievement. That that was if I wanted to pick my achievement for this, I think I have the same okay, other than the the top one first runs back on sixteen man, because if in case if you didn't watch it like my SWAT or story, back in the day I was a hardcore PvE -er, So I managed to do like uh, world second and world third back in the day when E V came out and there was like thousands of guilds trying to get that. And I was uh, top second on the hard mode and things like that. I don't want to go into that. But the best thing that I had, like, probably as an achievement back in the day when Tomb of Freedom Nad uh, was, like, really, really popular. I'm not going to say today is not popular or things like that. Still people playing there. But uh, when more people in Star Wars The Old Republic... Uh, I had a name for myself as well, but not just uh, the re the reason wasn't because of I was a hardcore PvE -er. The reason because I was the top, and I mean the top crafter in Star Wars: The Old Republic in that server. The, you name it, and I had it. Every single okay, character, that's impressive. every single biocam, every single arm stack, every single whatever barrel, whatever, and that's how I realized I can get rich out of it. One of my guildmates back in the day showed me how to do this, and I done it with the hilt. The first thing that I said, okay, well, let's just RE this hilt and see what happens. And I actually learned it. Let's see how much is in the GTN, none. And then I sold four for five million each, 20 million. And back in the day, like four years ago, when 20 million was absolutely rich. Oh yes, 20 million more would be a lot of credits to yeah. have back then. Nowadays, nowadays, right now, 20 million is absolutely nothing. 20 million is pretty much like the Tatooine stronghold. And yep. uh, 20 million back in the day was huge. And a lot of people asked me how I done this. So eventually I said, okay, I, I'm willing to say, give me the materials plus 500k, I will craft more. And eventually, not I played only on the Republic side. I had like level 24s and 27s and things like that, but I'm not really into the Imperial side. And then the GTM was merged in that time to both sides. Because back in the day, you know, the, the Republic had one GTN and the Imperial had one GTN. And then when they merged together, a lot of Imperial guilds actually decided to want it to craft specifically to me. And nobody else... Just to me. And I'm willing to say, for example, uh, okay, I have this guild. I'm willing to craft you guys for free, but I will keep the duplicates. So they said, okay, so I don't willing to pay like 500k fee. And uh, 
I, I will willing to keep up the duplicates. And then uh, one year later, I got my first like 120 million and then like 200 million and things like that. And I was Damn. so, so, so proud of myself that I got that. So uh, that was that if I wanted to pick my best uh, thing to achieve, that was my best thing to achieve. If... It's definitely a good one. I think you got me <laughs> there, to be honest. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about the current thing about Star Wars. We talked about the past, our memories and things like that. If you wanted to pick some uh, some things that you enjoy the most in Star Wars The Old Republic right now, as soon as you, let's just say you're logging in and you wanted to do something, what is the best thing that you enjoy the most in Star Wars The Old Republic? Could be like GCF, PvP, whatever. Just name it. Gonna be such a cliche, I'm just gonna say doing something with friends. It's li it doesn't matter what it is, I'll do it, as long as I'm doing it with friends. I, I will literally go up, uh, go the same answer, because I do enjoy PvP, uh, but not alone. Uh, because alone, especially on the Republic side, in case if you didn't know the Red Eclipse server, it is kind of suck. So, <laughs> so we we if I wanted to pick a number, like let's just say the weekly mission, you need to kill do twenty wins or just twenty war zones, and out of twenty war zones on the Republic side, I managed to one two. So damn, that's that's uh, that's pretty poor. Yeah, that is really really bad. So that's why I did side is sometimes just join into the dark side with this this guy in front of the camera right next to me whatever side he is uh when i'm editing this but uh yeah i i i can usually say uh playing friends is one of the one of the coolest things like even though when i picked you up with uh doing some heroics and we just talked about 30 minutes while we're doing heroics it was so much fun yeah. And I know, I know it was like heroics, which is not much of a big deal, but it was so much fun to do. And I never thought heroics yeah. are going to be that fun. Uh, so that, that's the thing with MMOs, right? Is yeah. that they are what you make of them. Like, regardless of what content they're putting out, your fun is is what you do. Okay? It's what you do with the tools that you were given. That, that is literally the end of it. Indeed. I totally agree. And doing it with friends is obviously a huge tool. It is. It is. Without that, probably there there could be more, no more like MMOs and things like that in genre in general. Instead, it could be like co-op. Absolutely. Games. But since we're talking about if MMO everybody played on their own in an <laughs> MMO, then you know, obviously, it wouldn't be very MMO-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. But yeah. Uh, now let's get into more uh, like a little bit of serious about the Star Wars, the Old Republic, and. Uh, the MMO. Since we're talking about MMOs, why did you stuck in Star Wars: The Old Republic? Because eventually, right now, if you're seeing all the games, we have our likes of like Black Desert Online, World of Warcraft, Eve Online. Uh, I can pick up like few 20, 30 early access or whatever MMO games that is out. Why did you stuck into Star Wars: The Old Republic? Don't tell me because of friends. I know that. But tell me more. Why? Because it's Star Wars. That is literally it. You just need to look at the name. It's Star Wars. And regardless, anyways, I've, I've tried other MMOs. I've tried Lord of the Rings Online. I've tried World of Warcraft. Um, honestly, I've tried many, many, many different MMOs since discovering the MMO genre. And there hasn't been... And honestly, I'm really trying not to be biased. Like, this is just trying not to be biased um i haven't found an mmo that i like more than star wars old republic like i really haven't like obviously i've discovered mmos where i've seen features and i've been like oh that's really cool and i really like that and yes admittedly in some mmos you know some things are better but i can't stick to another another mmo because it's not star wars the old republic it's it's not my game it's like you know, when you go home, you go home and you relax. It might be a dump, it might be a mess, maybe your pots aren't washed, but yep. it's home, it's where you like to be. Um, and then when you go over to your friend's house and they have a big TV, they've got lots of games, consoles, and it's great there, it's absolutely fantastic, but it's it's still not home. That, that's, that's it, it's not home, it's not where you belong. And it's like going back to Star Wars Republic from any other MMO, 
that's how I feel. Like when I log into the game, it's like, I'm home. This is where I am. This, this is where I belong. So enough about uh, like MMOs and things like that. I wanted to go and ask you about a serious spicy question. Okay. If you could be in a position to be the leader of Star Wars The Old Republic, the lead designer or the in-game lead or not the in-game leader, let's just say you're in charge. You could be Keith right. in Star Wars The Old Republic. What features did you put in? Obviously, I know two already, which is Pazak and Pod Racing, so that does not count. And what did you change in Star Wars The Old Republic? Bring it on. Give me whatever you want. Easy, bring. easy. Okay. So literally, I would do nothing that hurts or changes the actual core game. Um, but there is one thing that I would definitely do, and I think you know what it is. Um, I would go straight to whatever office, whatever people, whatever team works or is involved with the cartel market. <laughs> I know it. I would immediately question them. Yes, I would then question their superiors. I would then re-interview them to see if they could keep their jobs or not. <laughs> I would then remove the cartel market, and I would replace that with a direct purchase store where you can buy anything and everything that has ever existed on the cartel market for a certain amount of a price, you know, basically. Direct purchase for everything. Uh, yeah, I already knew that. So, yeah, it not surprise me, but it's really good to hear it anyway, because... Okay, but I, I do joke around with, like, you know, the people who work on it yeah, and yeah, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. I, I might joke around, but obviously I'm not being serious, <laughs> but I would definitely question some of the things that they do with the cartel market. But I, I, for me, that's a, this is not an answer. That is not enough for me. What game changes that you want? Maybe in PvP... In PV, I knew I I knew you're gonna say the cartel market because uh, it was already on my uh, question. So, uh, what kind of game-changing things that you have, for example, have an idea late one or two years ago, or maybe last week, uh, that you certainly put into Star Wars: The Order Republic, or you saw it on different game or MMO or whatever, and you, you wanted to put into Star Wars: The Old Republic. It could be a PVE or PVP or role play or content market you mentioned. Anything that you like had in your mind. It's a big question, and I guess you you can definitely be spoiled for choice, and you have to be careful with what you say as well, because it's like I can say one thing, and then later I might change my mind. I'm like, oh my god, that thing's so much cooler. So. <laughs> It's, it's a big question, um, and there's, obviously there's two sides to this coin. So for anybody watching, if I was in a position to change anything, I guarantee I would probably mess everything up and just give the job back to Keith. <laughs> um, but I guess I guess there's two things that stand out that I guess I would personally like to change, ones that I can think of now anyways. Obviously the first one being the, um, the game engine. I would do whatever I could to somehow improve it, to actually use the resources that you can throw at it. Um, if, like to me, and personally, some people will definitely disagree, right? So to me personally, and I know that a lot of people are going to disagree, is that even if you know we was to shut down the game for like a month so that we could revamp yep. the current engine to a state where you could, it would use all the resources that you throw, throw at it. So there would be you know, no more insane lag in PVP, no more you know sudden FPS drops in mad situations where you need to have your FPS so you can see what's going on, especially in 16 man situations. So mostly with PVP and mostly with 16 man operations. And you know, that's where it counts the most, but even just in the general gameplay and you're trying, and you've got a really sweet ass system and you're trying to play everything on max and the game's just like, no, sorry, no, just, just chugging across, just gently chugging across. So unless you've got like the latest equipment in there, which it's not even going to use all of, but you have to have like the latest equipment for it to use that fraction that's good enough to get to that, that standard, I guess. And, um, but yes, to me, I think that'd be something worth doing. Now, a lot of people are going to be screaming like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't shut down the game. You'll kill it. But if you were doing it for like a reason such as that, I think it could be a benefit and definitely a risk worth taking. And like at the same time, you could even somehow make a way to have the game on console. Like if that was to be a thing, I reckon people would definitely play on console. A lot of but that, that's a conversation for a very, very mm -hmm. different video. Um, 
but anyways the second thing that i would change and again this is these are the only ones that i can think of at this current time you know ask me another time and i might have changed my mind um but the open worldness of oh, the game yes. so like less loading screens um more room with mounts that kind of thing be able to use your mounts anywhere i think that just makes sense to be honest especially for an yeah. mmo like i know rp is a thing but there's such a thing as getting off your mount to rp so i'd like to use my mount everywhere <laughs> um but basically i would make it so that everything is vastly more open worlded so you look at planets like alderaan and that planet is like huge in it comparison is. to like Iocath or Oricon. <laughs> it's like I understand they're just daily areas, but why does it have to be just a daily area? Why can't it be, you know, a, a vast amount of environment for people to explore and discover, you know, lore objects and a few of the side quests and a little bit of story somewhere? I don't know. These are just little things that I sometimes think about. And that's definitely something I would probably change, add. I don't know how you want to put that. I, I'm not quite sure, but. Uh... Uh, yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, I I would love to see like more open worldness, uh, especially like in terms of PvP wise as well. If I wanted to go in there, uh, I know they tried it on IOCAD, but I th I think that was like that was like I'm not gonna say like a fail. I'm not gonna say not nobody done that because I done that. I went into a walker and killed like two or three sets. I'm not gonna say I didn't done it, but I didn't see like too much gills or things like that like let's just say let's go for a war for iocath and yeah. let's just go for like 30 versus 30 one guild to another guild and then just smash it whatever vehicles or mounts or uh, things you can use in iocath claim it use it or just be there and just have fun and play it i don't see a lot of like footages or anything in youtube out of like open worldness. If I wanted to go for like more open world thing that was like back in the day in Ilum, like the very, yeah. very, very first like laggy one, uh, I really, yeah. really, really enjoyed it to be perfectly honest. I was one of the few persons who I who enjoyed that, uh, but I I don't know how to improve that. But other than what you said about the open worldness, I, I totally agree. Like I wanna see like uh, an IOCAT thing where you just go in to uh, explore the planet, have like two or three quests, maybe like kind of in like an Easter egg ones, which is could be like uh, Star Wars related or whatever. It's same what they done with the with the whatever it's called, the secret achievement for uh, the scruffy looking nerf further. Yeah. And s similar to those, these are just some fun things. I know it's like RP elements and a lot of people asking for PvE or PvP content because the more focus on those MMOs are like pretty much PvP or PvE oriented and or maybe both. Uh, but this game is story oriented and they said it at the beginning and probably they said it more than 50 times and yep. and if you don't enjoy like more role playing and lore instead of like pvp and pve this is not your game that's for yes sure. which definitely used to be the case and i'll touch on that again in a second but just to clear something up like really quickly because i know there's definitely going to be people watching this so we're going to be like well why didn't you mention this um but the reason and just going back to like game changes um, but the reason i don't mention anything like class balancing or game breaking bugs is because those are obvious things that people would go for if they were able to change something like obviously if i could mm -hmm. i would check i would fix the preview window like if i could um or maybe add hood toggle but it's not really on my list of priorities oh, to be honest yeah. but the reason i don't say things like class balancing or adding more operations is because this is for me personally if i was to do those things i would mess them up i guarantee if I, if I even tried to re rebalance any class, I would just go to wherever this like thing is and I'd just go, okay, this spec does 10k DPS, that spec does 10k DPS. I would set them all to 10k DPS and be like, okay, we're balanced. Everybody does 10k DPS. So hence, I would just ruin it and I would kill it and that would obviously be bad for everybody. So that's why I don't mention anything like that. So I'm just clearing out for anybody who's going to be like, oh my God, you didn't mention class balancing or operations and how this thing is broken. So trust me, I think about those things, but then again, I'm not a dev, so I shouldn't really have to worry about those things. That's things that those guys need to worry about. Yeah, indeed. Those are the devs. We are not the devs. We are the influencers who give 
like eventually more hype to a specific content and also give you guys whatever you guys want codes or pretty much like stuff like that if we have the chance but other than that uh we are not the devs you are not the dev or maybe you if you are eric or keith you're watching this thank you so much but other than that uh we are not the devs we we certainly can talk about things that can eventually have a game changer and could be really good hype for like returning or starting again to star wars the old republic or as a fresh yeah. player so for, for example when what you talked about back in the day like swoop racing that could be a top a break total break change a lot of people just instantly joining and i oh, remember yes. a lot of people joined star wars the old republic because of the gcf i remember yes. a lot of players like they heard about this galactic starfighter and i wanted to go in and i don't really care about the game but i want to see it and people that i certainly know uh, and talked about it in guilds or whatever they started to play because of the gcf but then they realized there's so much lore and story in there they stuck into yep. the game so maybe that's that's the thing about an mmo right and a lot of people don't realize this is that an mmo doesn't have to focus on one thing if it and needs they... attention then sure then they should maybe focus on that for a little while but an mmo as a wise person once said as the hive and um, known as the hive leader an mmo needs to be your everything it needs to be your pvp game it needs to be your pve game it needs to be your crafting game it needs to be your role play game it needs to be your starfighter game it needs to be your battlefront game you know it needs to be everything to you that that mmo can't just be one thing it needs to be everything yes it can have one particular focus such as star wars Old republic has with story because from the beginning they've always said it is a story driven mmo and if you don't mind actually i'll touch on that a bit now for you if you yeah. want because go for it and um, obviously for the longest time they've been saying it is a story driven mmo and for the past five years five or six years whatever and um, that's what we've known so we've known story expansions we've known and um, the core storylines the one to 50 obviously some are better than others but we won't get into favorites here and yeah. um, you know, it is a story-driven MMO, at least now it used to be. Now, in the direction that we're going in, it quite possibly is going to become a MMO-based MMO, if Indeed. that makes sense. Indeed. You know, specifically because of what Keith is saying on the forums and you know the way he's presenting what it is that he is saying and the things that he wants to change for the game. Like, he understands that people want the MMO to be an MMO, and that's obviously, that's fine. People want that. And so we've had our story and it's got an amazing story and that story is never going to leave. It's always going to be there. So moving forward, it's really not going to hurt to keep touching on the MMO aspect of this game. And I think um, up until the next expansion or from the next expansion is when we will really see some serious changes in the game that actually make it the MMO that people want it to be. Like it is going definitely in the right direction for people who have been asking for it for like the past two years indeed i can totally agree with you in case if you didn't know what sam has been talking about like the mmo roots and things like that check out the dev posts and uh, keith has mentioned it and probably this is like uh that's why i'm really really excited about the next strobe map because maybe keith is gonna go back to the mmo roots because probably in there as i said and as we said we are not the devs we are just speculating but we love to speculate <laughs> so absolutely uh so as keith mentioned in the forums we were focused on story uh, and i'm quoting this we were focused on story development and left most mmo content alone for the past couple of years which he's totally right but he also said to change our direction we had to re to reorganize hire new talent and get everyone on board with the change direction and that is something that nobody writes it without a reason so if if they're not going Definitely. to into that if they're not taking this seriously he is not writing that at all so he's taking this seriously and they wanted to go, I think, to the next level. And I think they are going back, as as we say, in an MMO. Uh, and I know they're going to keep the story as well. And that's why it's gonna, I think the game is going to be really, really like hard to balance between the story and the MMO. It's going to be hard, but if they can do it, 
uh, Star Wars The Old Republic can be on another level and can be like a really, really uh, good MMO. Uh, I Definitely. mean, I'm not going to say it, it's not good at all. I'm not going to say, but uh, we all agree this game sometimes have a lack of content. Back in the day, uh, sometimes, uh, now we're not going to say it, but even though we have some features right now, we just got to go and for example play for like one week because of the hype but after that we're just gonna say nah i'm not gonna go into that i i i think i can ask sam about it as well like when was the last time you entered iocath iocath um maybe a week ago but only for the operation not for anything specifically on iocath yeah that, that's what i wanted to ask when the, was the last time when you done like the iocath uh not gonna say like story but daily missions I've done the dailies once on my Assassin Emperor, and that's it. I've not touched it since. And this is only because I wanted to set up an event, like a world PvP event, and then I actually went and experienced the dailies and what they reward, and I realized that for me, myself, that was not a possible thing for me to do. I cannot. There is no way in hell I can do what I do and grind out those dailies to get to a point where I can host an event on Iacaf which would have been cool for sure, but that's just not happening. Indeed, the point point is here that pretty much you touched it once because you wanted to test it out and wanted to host an event, but other than that, yep. you not start, touched it. Same goes to other ones. I like. I want to ask another one. When was the last time when you touched the Eternal Championship? Very, very good question. Um, I believe I have not touched the Eternal Championship since the Dark versus Light event. And how, how long it's there? Probably like more than a year, I believe. I think the Dark Versus Light event started just over a year ago. Exactly. Maybe I could be wrong. In, exactly. It was it was the content null between um the transition into um five point oh, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah. obviously before five point oh released. So from July then, from June or July is when it started. I don't know. I don't have fond memories anyway, so I don't really care. <laughs> and if they wanted to go back, like, uh, uh, I I think I can go, like, on and on with this. Like, when was the last time you, for example, done boarding party or things like that? But I'm not going to go in. But the, the thing is, and the reason why I asked it, because there was lots of content in there. But unfortunately, we're going to get bored so fast. Like, I love the Eternal Championship. As the right now... I love it. Like every time I'm seeing, I really love like doing bosses and things like that. But yeah. Other yeah. than four or five times that I done it, I I certainly say okay, maybe I do it one more time, maybe in a week later, and then three weeks later, I realize oh, I wanted to do it, but I didn't done it. Ah, oh, such a shame. Maybe next time. It happens. It's like there is a lot of content in the game. Obviously, if you've been playing for a really long time, you've done a lot of it. Yeah. And I've always said that if your if your achievement score, like the one the one that's in your legacy, wants tied to your entire legacy if your achievement score is not higher than twenty thousand, but you're stood there saying that you are bored and that this game has no content then you are a jerk like Indeed. you literally you haven't discovered the mass amounts of content in the game for you to do um because you could easily get up to a achievement score of 40k and maybe then you could start saying uh you know there's actually a lot of things that I have done and I don't want to do it anymore. Like for me, I've gotten to either 24 or 25,000 achievement score and I don't go achievement hunting. So that's why it's not really any higher because I've done what I like to do and I've dabbled in the other stuff and I don't continue it because, you know, it's not always my thing. You know, like you said with flashpoints, when it's the yep. last time you did this, because you have to like grind master like flashpoints and that kind of thing. But, but you know, if you haven't got up to at least 20,000 achievement score, then I believe that you haven't discovered enough in the MMO to say that you're bored. Indeed. Totally, I can agree. If you've not discovered this game that much, you should go out there, click uh, or press Y, go to the achievements, and also go to reputation as well. Don't forget there is reputations there and things like that. And unless if you've not done at least like two or three reputations, like let's just say Yavin, Rishi, and uh, Boss, for example, and you didn't know like at least one or two stories out of it you not discovered the game at all and and 
I'm, I'm even discovering the game right now as I'm doing like bounty hunter stories and things like that, which I never done because I don't have the time and effort to say I wanted to do the bounty hunter storyline. But now I wanted to do it because it's fun. And if, if I know some of you who saying, OK, this is not fun until I don't have like five operations on an update or like two war zones on each uh, update, this is not going to be fun for me then simply I can say, this is not your game, get the hell out of here, or you just wait simply, and that's all. Okay, so touching on that a little bit, like, you know, maybe not get the hell out of here, but, you know, um, it's like I said before, the, this MMO, this game, will give you the tools to have fun. Yeah. It is then you yourself, you have to take it upon yourself to use those tools and have fun, Indeed. right? But yes. when it comes to, like, um, how can I put it? Um, if somebody enters the game and says that they're bored or there isn't enough of one certain thing, um, you, you have to accept the fact that what you wincing and you complaining, like, it's not going to change anything. If anything, people would just like to laugh at you or, you know, people, the, the right thing to say to you would be, okay, so just accept that. It's okay for you not to play Star Wars Yoda Public. Like, nobody's forcing you to play Star Wars Yoda Public only. So take a break, go play something else. Like I, I have done that before. Like I've always been soaked because I want to be soaked. And you know, I always play because I want to play. I don't play religiously, but I play because I want to. So if you're bored or you're fed up with Star Wars Republic, then it's absolutely fine to just go to the unsub button and be like, hey, I don't want to play anymore. I'm going to unsub. I'm going to play something else. I'm going to wait until you've released new stuff. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to play some more. Like it's absolutely fine. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse my voice here. No worries. And it's absolutely fine to do that kind of thing. Like, no one is forcing you to sit there and play Star Wars Yoda Public only because you are just forcing yourself to say those things, such as, I'm bored. Uh, I wanted to go in for this, what you said. A lot of people are not forced to do it. You mentioned this. And some of my comments, like saying, like, uh, I made a video, why is there a lot of people quitting? Uh, it is a really popular video of mine. Uh, it blowed up, and I wanted to understand a lot of people why they're quitting. Uh, I understand your frustrations and things like that, but why do you stuck into Star Wars The Order Public still? And I wanted to ask, ask like probably a lot of people to why you stuck into Star Wars The Order Republic, and they said they ha they have put it too much time and effort into this game, and they don't want to quit it. And that's the thing. At least they put it effort and they discovered the game that much that they really care about this game even though if it's a negative or a positive but they care about Absolutely. this game they really care about this game and that's what probably Keith and a lot of people are hoping to be cared about this game and unless you not care they not gonna care they not gonna care about the feedback they not gonna care about us they not gonna care about the influencers they not gonna care about so on and on and on and on I can talk about on and on with the list but that's the whole There's thing it's like there is a difference between somebody who trolls and then somebody who actually feels passionate yes. about the game and it's always easy to tell like it always is obviously it's very easy to tell when somebody's being salty but that salty person could also be potentially very passionate about the game regardless of the manner of their feedback even if they should construct it better which they should because then it could be understood better and it could be you know relayed better mm -hmm. you know i can't go to eric and be like oh hey you know this one dude was effing and blinding in the comment section so he said f this to you f this about your mom you know all this other stuff it's like i can't go to eric and say this you know <laughs> but the, the main the main point behind what he was saying, it was said on there, just for example. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I can say that, but if you construct oh. the feedback better, then, you know, I can relay your feedback better <laughs> to, Indeed. you know, other people. And not that yes. I, not that it's my job to relay feedback, but yeah. I definitely will relay feedback when it stands out. Like, for example, with the cattle market stuff, I did that a lot. Um, and every time, like once a month, all of the influencers will do this report and they'll send it to Eric and be like, hey, you know, this video was pretty popular. People commented about this and, you know, my channel did this well, blah, 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 blah. You know, just some like um, statistics, I guess. It's nothing that like uh, they want specifically, I guess. Or I no. guess they do kind of want it, but it's that's really one. just to, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's optional, but it's just so they can kind of see like what happens in like what areas. So like, for example, if server merges were to happen, 
then they could sort of see how that affected us and whether that is a good and reliable source of feedback i indeed. think is the better way to explain indeed. that indeed i can totally i i cannot describe it better so i'm just gonna leave it there but the last thing that i wanted to ask about star wars the old republic and not just i'm actually not gonna ask uh this is kind of a speculation with you uh you probably okay. seeing the dev posts about the game update 5.4 and things like that and about the next yes. roadmap yes and that's what i wanted to go in okay uh, you saw and i'm gonna ex uh, i'm ac actually gonna quote this for you guys so uh not so long ago actually yesterday keith has touched the server merge discussion thread and they said uh about we haven't been communicating anything about server plans but i have dropped a number of hints uh, even in an interview i did that was on the bad feeling podcast if you guys didn't know it definitely check that out yeah uh, i said we are considering virtual virtuality everything in this thread plus a ton of other technical details and so on and on and on you can uh like the problem with this if i can go like on and on and read it but the problem is with pretty much like uh uh server merging like all of your stuffs like legacy cargo hold strongholds uh whatever server character server uh transfers with like characters in there and uh, guild names uh assets uh, in fact and more or conquest that dominates the larger groups and things like that. I can go on and on and list. But my question for you, Sam, could it be happen to have server merges after this? Okay. So you heard it here first, folks. And obviously, you know, like we said earlier, we're not devs, so we, I'm not going to confirm anything for you. And I don't know, anyways. Like I promise you, I don't know like any juicy news for you. And um, but from looking at the dev posts. And from looking at what everybody's been saying in the forums and you know how keith has sort of responded to that feedback i would say that it is almost certain it is practically crystal clear that server merges will absolutely happen on what scale i don't know if it's going to be mega servers i doubt it if it's going to be you know having only like three servers for uh, each different uh, location internationally then maybe maybe who knows but the key thing here to really um, pay attention to is what Keith is saying when it comes to these updates, right? He's saying credits are going to be, well, not are going to be made. He hasn't confirmed it, but he said they're working on making credits, um, like legacy-wide, legacy like basically all the currencies legacy-wide, so you can share your credits easily across your legacy, right? Okay, now pay attention to that. That's, that's across your legacy, okay? Your legacy is bound to your server. They also talked about how they would merge legacies. It's like the things that they're talking about and the, like literally just look at it. It is very clear that there is a plan in motion for server merges. Okay. Obviously I can't guarantee that they will absolutely happen, but is it, it is my personal observation right now that they will happen. Like that, that is me saying that I truly believe that they will happen and Yes, that's, that's like pretty much it that I've got for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty much I can totally agree with Sam. Uh, if they wanted to do it, they not put a decent amount of changes about legacies. If they if they not considering it at least to like have like still not a mega server, but to have like one European servers on each language. So one German, one English, one France and uh, two or three like uh, American servers, they not consider these changes. So that's at least my opinion of this. And that's Sam's opinion, which you can hear the first time here as well. And yep. uh, I also wanted to touch about the next roadmap since Eric, uh, Keith and Eric also gave us some hints about what is going to happen. So you mentioned legacy credits and things like that. What do you think that Keith is going to wrote on the next roadmap? Like what it, after your dev post, what you're seeing, what do you think that like one or two topics could be? in the new roadmap server merges definitely is going yep. to be there um obviously we've got the new flashpoint blah 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 but we already know that stuff um the next operation boss is likely going to be 
um, at least named, I think. Maybe even a little bit of details, maybe even a picture. Who knows? Um, I don't know. It's, it's a good question, really. I don't think any of the really, really, really juicy stuff is going to happen until we find out some news for 5.5. Like, 5.4 is going to be awesome, but 5.5, I think, is going to be lit. Uh, I'm going to go to a little bit of better or, like, higher of the expectations here. So, it. like, this is a roadmap. And probably on August until the end of the year, they Keith is gonna said almost like not I'm not gonna say everything, but almost everything that is like pretty much I'm not gonna say like hundred percent complete, but like let's say fifty percent complete, and they wanted to do it. And one that one that we know already is going to happen, as you mentioned, five point five. They probably gonna talk about master mode drops. And not just gonna say like components, but I'm gonna say platinum drops, like item drops is about to happen. And the bolster is like a really, really big issue to the game. I heard that. And also coming up on game 5.5, uh, like they're going to go up to the bolster to 242 and things like that. And a lot of people I know, they are pissed about it because they wanted to go like 250. But Keith has right about I'm it. I'm just saying. Going to 250 is ridiculous, and nobody should expect it yep. to be 250 <laughs> at all. Because it's, when you play the game, you have to grind to get 248, and that is going to take you a long time to get one character fully kitted in 248. So to be bolstered to 250 is an absolute smack in the face to everybody who grinded for 248. So I think it is ridiculous and, that people yeah. are expecting a 250 bolster, it and I think 242 is more than generous you can at least be slightly competitive in pvp with 242 and saying that gear isn't always a factor and skill definitely yeah. falls into this category especially with pvp i mean come on guys <laughs> come on we we all knew about the pvp it's not all about the gear guys i'm, I'm my main is even 240 or 236 mixed and i winning one versus one duels even with against uh uh marauders or whatever uh sentinels or like uh, guardians at the same time and they they have much higher levels as i can check in for example the Desen, but they just don't have the skill to use it right uh and also before i'm gonna wrap up like all the sotor stops and things like that i wanted to go and ask you uh, before you, obviously you wanted to make a video for this, but I wanted to ask you before you making the video, what do you think about the Umbara stronghold and the new changes that's coming up for like, uh, saying that you need to do the flashpoint to earn the, like, as Keith saying, a specific key to earn the rights to get the, the like obtain the key to automatically like get you the stronghold and also maybe you need to do like a 10 times solo mode or five times solo mode it's not confirmed yet so i don't yeah, know any yeah. fm any informations about it before you're saying i need to do it 10 times i'm gonna quit no don't worry it's not confirmed everything is not confirmed we're just speculating but what do you think about these changes coming up about the new umbara stronghold okay so i would like to say that i called it okay However, I didn't actually call it. I just talked about it. Now, a very long time ago, I said, why do we not get cool game rewards um, that isn't gear? Like, why yeah. is gear on the pedestal? Why is it always gear? Why is gear always my reward? Why is command crates giving me gear? Why are operations only giving me gear? Why are flashpoints only giving me gear? Why is everything only progressing how strong my character is? I guess I get that that is an important aspect of the game, but it's always annoyed me that there isn't a way for me to get a really cool weapon from doing something or get a really cool armor set, you know, something like that, right? So I've always, always wanted there to be a way to get awesome in-game rewards from doing things in-game, okay? Obviously, we have our mounts at the end of, like, Master Mode Operations, which is cool, Wings of the Architect and, you know, the degree, degree oh, one, yeah. is it? In TFB, and it was the orb thingy. Um... But yes, and I said, and I, I'm not even joking, and this is quite some time ago, why why not do something like 
I don't know if I said Flashpoint, it might have been the Eternal Championship, but why can't we do something like that like 10 or 20 times and then get a stronghold out of it? I literally said that. I literally said that. And now they are doing that. So nothing makes me happier that they are actually doing something like that. And we saw hints of this anyways, when um, they released Tyfe and Tyfe drops his um, saber, his platinum yeah. item. That's brilliant. That's exactly what they should be doing. Then they should continue doing that. And the same thing with this stronghold. I think it's, I think it's awesome. And it the is. fact that we're getting another stronghold so soon just says that they're actually taking seriously these um, content updates that they're actually putting effort in. And even though the Manam one, people were a little annoyed, you know, with like the hooks and whatnot. Yep. Fair enough. You know, you, you have that right um, to complain. And regardless, we've got it. Like the, they're actually putting the content out, and I, I feel like some people are actually ignoring that. Like the content is going out and yes it's there like it's coming it's there there's proof there's evidence and there's another stronghold coming and you have to do stuff in game to get it so please don't complain <laughs> like that is, that is the best way to do it to actually play the game and be rewarded for playing the game is what a game should be about indeed uh to be perfectly honest it is what sam said it's totally what the point if you are for, for example, if you're willing to force to do a really awesome title, which I, for example, wanted to get for a long time, for example, the Meatback title, which you needed to do uh, all of the f uh, False Emperor and Battle of Illum 25 times, so that means 50 times to get that title. I mean, okay, it is an awesome title, but for me, it's not worth doing that much, like grinding. But if you if they wanted to do something like this and putting like it doesn't really matter what stuffs it could be like a decoration could be like a platinum item could be like a pet or whatever I'm willing to do it because it's fun and rewarding and that's what matters because at the end Absolutely. of the day at the end of the day if I want to be honest they listen to you Sam because you <laughs> called it they listen to you at the end of the day they pretty much listen your voice as you mentioning in a lot of times heard your voice in your videos but yeah uh, this is like uh, a one, one of the one of the top topics that uh, wanted to go in but yeah this this is so much fun i can't wait for the new stronghold by the way yes same here very excited to see what they're doing with it so we all mentioned about your past and about Star Wars The Old Republic. Let's get on to your YouTube channel. So the first question is how did you start the YouTube channel? Like the Star Wars The Old Republic Central. How did you... Okay, I'm not going to call you that anymore. Swotor Central channel. How did you start <laughs> that? Um, so it's, it's as I've said before really. Like when I made the channel and I made the name, I didn't make the name in anticipation of what would happen. Like I never expected anything to happen, nor did I expect that I would be doing any of this here today. Um, like the main thing about starting the channel was to fulfill my creativity because I like to make videos and the channel that I used to use was no longer active, so I decided to make my own. So that was like one of the main reasons to fulfill my creativity because I wanted to make videos just because I had a passion for it. Um, Secondly, it was the whole making guide things and you know just wanting to teach people how to do things and also to just talk to people and expand a community and get to know a newer community. So it was a lot of different things to me all at the same time and all of those mm. things meant a lot to me. And my very first video was the Typhon Datacron guide um, and that didn't really do well at all but you know nothing like that really bothers me like if i put time and effort into a video and even a couple of people watch it then i'm going to be happy with that i will be happy with that obviously it, these days i i would expect it to get obviously you know attention because of like how many like subscribers i have and how many viewers i get and but, you know if something doesn't like I, I never consider it a flop like if i started a new project and it got like two views then so what? Like I made that project, I wanted to make that project, and then I shared that project. That that's to me that was the goal. The goal is never to somehow get loads of money from it. Because I know some people are always like, hey, you just you're thinking about those sweet views and that's that sweet oh, sweet revenue. Again, let me tell you all that my channel in the last week earned enough revenue 
to buy me a couple of cans of Coke, okay? So I don't do this for that sweet, sweet revenue, okay? Maybe if I had a few hundred thousand subs and maybe a hundred thousand views, maybe then I'd do it for some sweet money. But you know, the, at, this, at the moment in time, you've got no chance at all. Is it a feasible way to make a solid income? Like, no. Absolutely, at absolutely. All. There is no way, as we mentioned, there is no way we can live with this like YouTube channels and things like that. We cannot simply uh, enjoy ourselves and just making videos for you guys. Obviously exactly. we enjoy it. You know, we, we do we it out of the passion. Yeah, we, we still not lost our passion for making videos, but we certainly not doing this for money or views. We obviously wanted to get some attention, which is awesome. If you, for example, seeing a video like you done a video let's just say and you get the usual views like 10 or 20 but one video that has like an interesting title in it or maybe just a little bit of like let's just say the youtube world car clickbait title uh people wanted to see it and people will click in it and obviously that goes to two like uh reasons pretty much the first or conclusions the first conclusion is pretty much he's doing it for views or the second thing is maybe there is a little bit of something behind it why why he put it that title for example see, why is there a lot of people quitting the game yes you see there's, there's two sides to that right there's a difference between clickbait and misleading okay yeah so first off for anybody who doesn't do youtube videos and you don't understand the premise of clickbait basically any guide that you go to around YouTube content creation will tell you to clickbait, okay? I try not to, but sometimes I like to put something attractive in the title just because I I want a certain topic to have um, attention to, you know, enhance that topic. But I will never mislead, okay? The title will always represent the video, okay? So, but that that's the thing, like, clickbait, I'm saying clickbait, but... It, Every time everybody, somebody hears that word clickbait, they immediately think, oh my god, that's bad, that's terrible. When no, in reality, clickbait is exactly what you want as your title. Mm -hmm. It is exactly what you want on your title because you want people to go to that video. Now, misleading is an entirely different subject. Now, misleading is where you do a clickbait title and then the video is nothing to do with that title. Okay, then you've got a point. Yep that's when you get a point otherwise clickbait and especially in this day and age on youtube it it should be by now um considered as something that you know youtubers just do like it should just be something people expect unless of course i don't know if anybody's familiar watching if you know somebody called lance stewart on youtube that is misleading yeah. content also known is the worst form of clickbait <laughs> indeed he is doing some like ridiculous clickbait uh, but we're not gonna go into like other like youtubers no, and no, things no. like that we're not we're not gonna point out we we are small creators and we enjoy creating videos but i wanted to ask you about i know you were doing this for a long a long time like probably three or four years like um two years YouTube. in august two years uh when did you started like making more like when did you actually realize about like this youtube th thing can be like serious so when did when did when did you take it like seriously this youtube channel like obviously you put in like some content in it but when you for example realized how many for example subscribers or that video just got blew up then you make it serious so so anyway when was the uh when did you started making serious about your youtube channel okay so obviously i don't mean to be difficult but basically the deal is when i first started the youtube channel um you know it's not that i w i wouldn't have taken it seriously um so obviously I took it seriously as a passion and as a hobby that I wanted to do, but it wasn't until around the point where my videos were getting like an average, a couple of hundred views. And then I ended up getting like a thousand subscribers. Like that hit me, that hit me hard. Uh, especially when you actually realize that that is 1000 unique people who now want to follow you on this website where they can watch your videos. And at that point, that's where you start to think, Hey, you know, this is this is something that other people are also actually really enjoying. So I think at that point is when I started to take it more seriously, especially with editing and the topics I wanted to cover. And then from that point on, it's not, um, you know, I, I didn't get to like 10,000 subscribers and be like, hey, I'm gonna start taking this seriously now. Because it's always been 
at a um, a path of just taking it more seriously, like as I go, or I don't really know how to explain it very well because I take it seriously overall, but not to an extent where I'm at home just doing this 24 seven because that <laughs> is not feasible. And for anybody who no. doesn't know, I do work. I do work, okay? I work nearly 40 hours a week and I work my ass off to provide, okay? And I still try to I try to do this at home, which I'm also working my ass off with because I do in fact take it seriously. <laughs> so, so there you are. go. Everybody who, except probably not streamers, like actual streamers who can live with, while they are streaming, like for example, Joe became one of that. So congratulations for you, by the way. Absolutely, Darren. yes. If you're going to stream it, then it's a whole different story. Like they have to take it seriously to an extent where you know they yeah. have to have goals. Like if they're going to be a full-time streamer, then they need, then they really do need to encourage things like donations and subs because they can't be a full-time streamer otherwise and that's the point it's like when you flick through the channel on a tv like you know you have to pay for that channel so it's like when you go to somebody who streams it's like that's like your way of paying for that channel and that's just i i guess the way of doing things it's like the status quo it's, so. it's it's yeah it's totally right like i remember back in the day there was like the youtube thing or become a youtuber wasn't even a thing until like youtube reached you like hey I will give you guys a contract then go for it and make videos about like actually we paying for you to make videos nowadays right now people are usually calling youtube now dead i'm gonna quote this dead so uh a lot of people like even content creators not me that those who have two million three million five million subscribers they call youtube dead because they missed like the youtube in it like I don't know if you're familiar with a like a really famous YouTuber called KSI. There was a, like a FIFA YouTuber back in the day. And I, I know of to... him, but I don't like follow him or anything. Yeah, that's totally understandable. I follow him, like I follow his careers and things like that until he had a break, until like five months. And then he started to talk again. And pretty much he said like he missed the, the, the YouTube, like the you out of it. If you think it about channels and things like that they just like multimedia companies and things like that they have editors they have uh, whatever guys who's just doing their behind the scenes and the the youtubers as the content creator shouldn't be that it should be like you but i'm not gonna go into that we i'm just wanted to point it out wanted to point it out that we're not doing this for like money or attention or any kind of stuff we just enjoy ourselves and we just want to make people at least laugh or happy or enjoy to watch or informative or i can go on and on with the list okay so here. just just to sort of like reinforce that because obviously it's all right for us to sit here and be like oh it's not about the money but then people will question things such as like a, a patreon campaign a donation oh, yes. link or oh, yes. Um, just monetizing your videos for stuff okay so just just to sort of touch on that for anybody who is curious so it's, for example i do have a patreon campaign it is there set up for people who want to help me fund streams which are expensive because everything i do on youtube is an exclusion of my own work like my own work and i've made this very clear on my patreon campaign that i will only use that money if necessary towards what i'm doing on youtube otherwise i will use patreon because I believe that if people really want me to do this, then um, then they can they can they can take that path in helping me get to a place that is sustainable while earning rewards at the same time. And I'm now realizing that's going to come across really really bad. And um, but trust me, I have poured a lot of money into YouTube. Like I've potentially poured about fifteen hundred pounds. I'd say about one thousand five hundred pounds into YouTube. And as a channel that has less than twenty thousand subscribers, that is a very substantial amount. I can also tell you that that amount that I've just said is far more than the entire earnings across my channel since its existence. Okay. So yes, we monetize our content, but that is a way of putting towards things. Okay. And I guarantee you it's not much. It's really not. And that's why things like Patreon can really help when you want to achieve a new goal on your channel, such as being able to stream, such as being able to provide better quality content, such as new creative software, such as new editing transitions, which cost real money for people who are not aware, you know, those things cost 
everything in this day and age it has a cost so sometimes youtubers will like to encourage people to help out and that is literally the end of the story it is an optional thing people should not be discriminated for it especially other people that like to gossip especially when some people have a sub button on their twitch other people have a patreon that is literally it that is literally like the case right dead like there's nothing more to say about it and if you're not happy with a youtuber who monetizes their videos then i guess that's your problem and not their problem but if you don't want to watch those ads, that's completely fine. There's a skip button or you can just install ad blocker as most people will do anyways with YouTube. The thing is, even if we do monetize our videos, even if we do have a Patreon campaign, even if we have a donation link at the end of the day and I'm going to be pretty blunt, it's nothing to do with you. Yes, um, I can totally agree with Sam. Like we are not forcing anybody to watch our content if you certainly watch it just watch it if you guys don't want to watch it or don't want to support us then just don't it's just a free decision Absolutely. of your life just like any other decisions the next thing that i wanted to ask is what is your favorite like content creators or like videos that you watch so obviously there's tons of videos on youtube and some of my favorite videos what you mean like just a video that i've watched and i've just like really enjoyed it it could be like channels it could be like uh, or just videos or just content creators in general ah this is it's a big question man this is a very big question i i honestly don't know like the only thing that i can think of that would stand out is just things like trailers trailers or episodes of something that i can watch on youtube um unless we're just talking about i don't know maybe like a, a channel that i like to watch um but otherwise i guess just like things like movie trailers or something trailers or game trailers even star wars the old republic trailers i guess those are like rewatchable, obviously and some of my favorite videos of all time so i don't know interesting about the trailers and things like that now the next question is what is your favorite content creators that you watch it don't need to be like star wars the old republic just overall channels that you okay love so you i do them. and this i'm being very honest i do try to keep up with everybody who does star wars the old republic stuff i do try like if i have free time and uh, i'm sitting around for a few minutes or something i'll tune into someone's video see what they're up to see what's going on and uh, because more often than not it's going to be interesting I mean, obviously, they put effort into a video, you go into it, it's, it's probably going to be interesting. Um, but other than that, some channels that I do like to check out, and I don't know if other people watch these or not, well, obviously they do, because these people have, like, millions of subscribers, is a channel called Brave Wilderness, and it's run by somebody called Coyote Pizza, and that dude is, like, freaking awesome. He's, like, so enjoyable, like, just to watch overall. He's so cool. It just, like, it just, like, um wildlife adventures and it'll show you different um creatures and animals and reptiles and all sorts of, all sorts of things that he comes across on his adventures and um, they're just really enjoyable to watch I don't, I don't know and as we were talking about earlier dragon ball um there is some dragon ball youtubers which i've been watching which are <laughs> you know talking about Elia, who use clickbait a lot <laughs> um, but yeah I enjoy watching those guys I think they have some pretty good opinions so people like Unreal End Gaming um, Anime Live Reactions I think he really drags on quite a lot to be honest but I, st I still enjoy watching them nonetheless so my next question goes to editing because I wanted to ask you how long it took you to make a video so how long the process and what uh, softwares do you use uh, to record the video or make the videos? So, okay, so you mean how long does it take me to make a video kind of thing and then like what's involved? Um, okay, so basically most of my videos are spontaneous and which is kind of annoying to me because as I was telling Peter earlier, I have, I have a list of many, many, many videos that I could make and I probably should make them. But more often than not, some news pops up or something interesting pops up and I'm like, hey, I want to make a video on that. So it's very spontaneous most of the time. Um, completely depending on what it is, if it's a news piece, it will maybe take me an hour or two to get the project finished. Um, to get it actually uploaded onto YouTube is a completely different story because <laughs> my upload speed is terrible. So it will probably take me anywhere between 
um, free in 10 hours to get the entire thing after editing um, uploaded onto YouTube. So that can definitely be a demotivator, especially when it comes to news, because it's like, I know that there are many other YouTubers and not that I'm discrediting them at all, um, but you know, there's many of the support our YouTubers which are gonna upload news pieces like as soon as that news comes out. And if, if you don't upload, and not that it's competitive, you know, it kind of slightly is. If you don't upload quickly, then you miss, then you miss on like that first bit of like buzz, right? Cause that's when it's fresh and it's new. And I only, I mean this in a sense of people making the same video, right? I, I don't completely mean this in a competitive view. So for example, uh, let's just say, say me and Kid Lee, for example, and it, literally just hypothetically, right? Let's say tomorrow, um, oh, no, sorry, let's say today news about the Embarrass Stronghold was released. Um, so me and Kid Lee make a video, right? So Kid Lee has his video ready, I've got my video ready, then it comes to uploading it. Kid Lee will have his uploaded in like 10 minutes. Mine will take half a day to upload. So you can see the difference between them. So by the time mine's uploaded, everybody already knows about it. And then it kind of demotivates me and it's like, oh, this really annoys me that I can't get this video up on time because now people aren't interested, people already know. And it's like, I, I just spent a couple of hours to upload this video and people already know what's going on. And I mean this specifically in a news category, okay? Because I did, I did say earlier that I, I do definitely do this out of the passion for my own genre of videos but when it comes to news that's definitely does play a factor um so yes it can it can take me anywhere up to a complete full day cycle to get a video on youtube and um, as for editing software i use sony vegas pro 14 sorry magics pro 14 and um, i use that for editing video editing my effects my transitions everything i very rarely use photoshop and I was saying before that I only use Photoshop in instances for like cropping and masking. So for like when I need to be really accurate or really detailed, I'll use Photoshop. because obviously it has the tools to do that. Um, obviously my rendering is also done in Vegas. For recording, I'll use what's known as Ready on Relive. Anyone can use it, just download it, Google it. Ready on Relive, you can download it. It records in 4K, it records in 1080p. It's awesome. And then I sometimes use Audacity, sometimes, very rarely. Do I need it? But I will sometimes use it. That is so surprising to hear it. So you're not even using Photoshop on your thumbnails at all? No, because I'm not a scrub. <laughs> I, I use Vegas for my thumbnails and I'm good. I'm very good at making thumbnails. Wow, then you are really, really good at this. I mean, I can totally understand it because uh, by the way, I wanted to go back what you said about that uh, news and things like that. I had that competitive feeling as well. Since, like, uh, we didn't know each other, like, I didn't know, like, all of the content creators, but I know certainly people that made content and they bring in the news. So, uh, Swotor TV done it, you and Kid Lee. And, for example, uh, Kid Lee is probably the fastest one to make, like, news and things like that. And I was like... Oh my god, yeah, exactly. news came out, awesome news, new expansion, and I wanted to make it first, like, I wanted to be the first guy to make it, come on, come on, let's do it, let's do it, it doesn't really matter, okay, I recorded it, uh, let's just put some slight editings in it, and <laughs> yeah, that's it, upload now, and then the next 10 minutes, yeah, I yeah, I get what you mean, late. but it, it, it definitely has to be more on the quality side, though, that's my tip for you, don't rush it, put quality into it, put quality into it. Okay, so like the deal with that is though, and this is just something about myself, and I've mentioned it a few times already, and it's that creative fulfillment, right? Because not that I'm going to, again, discredit anybody, because you can make your videos any way you want to. But in my opinion, it's easy to walk around the fleet, or walk around your stronghold and be like, hey, this is coming, right? But when you put your own touch on it, and when you take all of the text, and you, you make your own text on screen, okay? It shows people that you you did that you put you put the time in you sat there you typed all of that out you put it in there it's not a copy and paste job because you reword it you know it's like when you go to a friend at school or something like hey can i copy off your work it's like yeah just change it up a little bit so they don't know that you've copied it's like so it's not always like that it's like obviously i'm reading from the dev tracker and it's like okay so this is in i'll put it in short i'll put it on the screen make it easy to understand because sometimes the devs will say things which i think people like i'm like 
what <laughs> so sometimes i'll like dumb it down in you know, a layman's terms for people so yes it's that that creative side of it i have to fulfill myself i can't just sit there and be like yeah this is coming this is going to be really cool and again i'm not discrediting anybody this is just the way i like to do it and i had this conversation with sua teresa before as well because it's easy to make like a pack opening video it, and it is. this is one of the reasons why I didn't like making the pack up new videos. And this is also one of the reasons why I stopped. And this is before the cartel market rent, by the way. And, um, you know, it's easy to sit there and open a pack. It's easy to make that video. It is. I can sit here, I can start talking, and I can guide you through the pack. It's easy. It's too easy for me. I need to challenge myself. I need to go into an operation and I need to make you a guide for it. And I need to work my ass off to make sure that that guide is spot on okay that's what i'm about it needs to be creatively done it needs to fulfill me creatively it, otherwise i'm not happy with it and if we go back to some of my older videos if we go back to like falcoria and explained i'm heavily disappointed in that video and i don't mean because of views or anything because it did really well in views it really did and it did really well in engagement and that's what makes me sad because so many people wanted to watch it and to me, that video it was a huge disappointment because it didn't have the video of Liz. It didn't have in-depth explanations. I didn't really um, source anything. You know, I didn't really interact with the viewers properly in the video. And for me personally, it's like, why did I even put that out? Like, that's, that's not a good video. And it's, eventually, I will probably remake it and I will probably do it a lot better. And I said this before in like channel updates and things, especially sort of my guides. I feel like I could have done them better and I feel like I should do them better. And I feel like I'm doing a disservice to the community mm -hmm. if I don't do them better. I feel like they have to be, they have to be good. Like yeah. they just, you can't just upload something lazily. It has to be good. Yeah. Like if you're going to do something, do it properly. And, that, and that's basically and it. And it is. And that's why like pretty much like uh, content creators need a break. Like if you don't know uh, like this breaks and things like that. Sam had a break uh, not so long ago, like a two week break before he came out not so long ago in August. But uh, in case if you don't know, I had a one week vacation and we needed that. Like even though I had like a pack opening and things like that, but that is so easy to make. Like I, it's really, really easy for me just to take two takes to make like one video where I'm opening the packs and the second one when I'm talking about the overall things and okay the issue is I'm, I'm not doing that as I said to views and things like that and we're not gonna go into that anymore but the reason why I wanted to make like pack openings because I enjoy it and unless you enjoy it uh, you can make like a little bit better content and things like yes. that but you cannot do it with a pack opening you cannot do like a, a better editing or s a better stuffs with 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 a pack opening you cannot you just literally do do not have like you can do like a, a 420 blaze it in a pack opening you're just gonna laugh at it but then you you you're just gonna say okay whatever and then moving on but if you are willing to, to do more effort in it if, like let's just say for example like a uh, a discussion video about the server mergers and you're just gonna point out some certain topics forum posts and things like that and then maybe some of the uh, facts about it uh, and maybe then just some gameplay and things like that you can de really really easily edit these out really really well and that's why oh, I yeah. said uh, you you can like if you're willing to do it then you're gonna see like great response for your community as well like uh for me the hardest part is not the editing is the language because for me english is like still a learning process and every time i'm learning something new about like the the english like language in general because it's hard for me as like a Hungarian cell cat guy, as Sam realized, that, <laughs> uh, as a Hungarian guy, really hard to like talk English because even though my accent is weird and things like that, it, it is, I, I think what I achieved like as a Hungarian and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid to say it. I'm one of the, one of the only influencers, I'm not going to say I'm the only one, but one of the only influencers right now that is not on the UK or the US. 
and that is quite hard like just if we if we can think about like Leva uh, or I Leva I don't know how to pronounce her name but Eleva. yeah Eleva uh, she is a streamer in case if you didn't know there is uh, me and other than that I don't know who who else. Volk obviously and yeah, Volk is also Hungarian. Oh, um, wait, no, he's Bulgarian. Bulgarian, Bulgarian <laughs> different. Uh, so, yeah, other than that, there is not much people who are, like, from the Europe, or from, like, Europe. Obviously, UK is in Europe, but who's really the main language is English. And that is my, my difficult part, because it's sometimes just I'm talking too much, and I'm not going into the point. And that is like a whole issue for me. And I can write like a lot of people ask me like, why you not just write scripts or things like that? Because it's much easier, but I'm not that guy. I'm, I'm to be perfectly honest, I can go for it, but I can go for it like two or three videos and I'm just going to get bored of it. And I'm not, I'm not going to write scripts or things like that. I mean, Maybe... you also have to take into consideration the videos that you do. And most of the videos that you do, and correct me if I'm wrong, is things that are related to packs and also things that are related to um you know words that come to you on the spot like you can't script what you're going to say in like a pack opening or like a yeah. worth it episode because you need to be able to talk freely about what it is that is going on on screen yeah if if we can talk about like guides or things like that that is obviously can be like scripted because yeah. it's it, it's it's a good thing to at least not going to say like uh, Nefra, what he's doing is pretty much like just face away from the and and just hablaging and and just say. Blah, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. I have to do this, but Nefra is a she, okay? Nefra is a gal. Okay. Yeah, just as bring I, it out as, there. as I mentioned, yeah, the English part, as I mentioned. So sometimes the he is she for me is nothing. So that's why he right. is a she. Right. Uh, so uh, yeah, she. Uh, as a like a uh, boss pretty much you need to face out to the boss and then what else you need to watch out for the droids if i can like just go for this this is not gonna be like a good guide if i just go like uh she's doing that debuff stay away from the droid and you're killing the boss fight P -p boss pretty much that's done that is not a guide if, if, if I wanted to go for like a worth it episode, like, okay, I got this item and this item. How much is it? That one and that one is 50k, that one is 5 million. That is nice. Moving into the next packs, bomb, 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 and so on and on and on. It can go for worth it, but it, not, it cannot go for guides or like discussion videos and things like that. Sometimes I yep. screw it up on discussion videos as well. Don't get me wrong. So that's why it's hard to me to accept this English thing right. so yeah uh moving on i wanted to ask you do you rewatch your videos sometimes okay so that's a good question now i'll only rewatch a video if i think there is an error or if somebody points out an error and sometimes i'll rewatch a video for inspiration um, especially when it comes to guides and sometimes because you know people are forever changing you know yeah. my opinion is one that changes very often so and i'm you know going back to the dark versus light event um i had to make sure that i rewatched everything i said about the dark versus light event because i wanted to recap what i originally thought about the dark versus light event and then compare it to how i now felt about the dark versus light event which was worse, sure. actually, but yes. Um, yes, yeah, so sometimes it's good to go back and rewatch some of your videos and just sort of understand the mindset that you were in at that time so that you can um, structure your new opinion better, if so, that makes sense. Yeah, it is. It is totally makes sense. So, But I wanted to ask, you, for example, you're not going to rewatch your, like, for example, one of the behind the scenes because it was fun or something like that. You're not going to do that, but you're just going to... Um... Not normally, no. I mean, sometimes, um, if it's a 4K video, I'll I'll put it on and make sure that it looks good because I like to quality assure my 4K videos because mm -hmm. I put a lot of effort into those. And um, but for like Beyond the Walls and things like that, I don't 
really rewatch those unless there was like a really memorable moment and I want to share it. And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, go to this video and then go to 28 minutes in, like something really awesome happens. And uh, okay. apart from that, there is really no particular reason for me to rewatch a video because more often than not, um, because it's all right saying rewatch a video, once I've made a video and once it's edited, I will watch it anyways. <laughs> so I will make sure it's good yeah. to go. Like, I'm not going to be like, okay, it's edited. I don't need to watch this at all. I'm just going to put it on. <laughs> you, no, you you need to make sure it's okay. You, you rewatch it and you, you make sure you wasn't doing anything funny. Like, especially if you're on face cam, you know, maybe you had an awkward moment and you had to stop recording and then continue recording for whatever reason. And then you, you go to like 10 minutes in your video and you didn't watch the entire 20 minutes. So you're like, okay, we'll upload it, we're good. And then you go back to it on YouTube and it's like 15 minutes in, there's this really awkward moment where you just sat there for 10 seconds, just sort of like <laughs> thinking of what to say next. And then, yeah. and then you go and you're like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, and indeed. I, I personally watch like, uh, only like one of my funniest uh and and sometimes editing wise i'll rewatch it as well but uh, other than that i just watched like one of the like funniest things that i for example don't have it or just corrupt it for some reason and things like that or just remember like oh I, rem- I i remember i screwed up that like intro five times that was so funny and things like that but usually intros I- are like the best of it for any youtuber just yeah. because you mess them up every time like you say them for every video and then you go to record the intro for your next video and you're like hello guys my name is central and welcome back to swat or some you mess it up every time <laughs> Sit, relax, and back. Is it right, Sam? <laughs> Sit, relax, and back. Because this you're about to get awesomeized. I think is the yeah, word. <laughs> and this, the word. shout out to Jay for that. <laughs> awesomeized. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, it is. The memes never die. <laughs> now I wanted to ask you another thing, which is, what was your favorite videos that you done? Um, okay, so, sorry, Jeremy was just messaging me. He, he wants to join the chat. I was like, no, no, you're not joining this. Um, okay, so my favorite videos. Um, hmm, good question. Hmm, let me think for a second here. Because hmm. most popular doesn't mean favorite. Um, top 50 tips and tricks. Yep. It's definitely one of my favorites. It's also one of my most popular. Um See, the next video that I'm releasing is probably going to be my favorite, to be honest. That, and you, you know, because you've seen, obviously, I've shared it with you. Um, actually, to be fair, this this video might even be up by the time. It's, basically, it's my Dread Fortress guide. For anybody who doesn't know, I took the time off so I could work on stuff. Um, Dread Fortress guide is going to be releasing on my channel. It's very in depth. It's comprehensive. It goes over all the boss fights, everything you need to know for a Link beginner or even a veteran player. <laughs> um, that video. I worked my ass off for. Um, How long, yeah, for example, like, that video to took you to edit? I'm not joking when I say this. It took me nearly a week on and oh off. Oh my god! To actually figure out how to present, like just the video itself. So that was like building the overlays and having all of the relevant background footage because I did Dread Fortress at least six times and recorded it or oh, six times okay and then i also had my guildies record themselves so that i could get a healer's perspective i could get a tank's perspective and a dps perspectives okay fair enough i've not used all of those perspectives because i didn't need to in the end i had too much and i've, I've just used what i needed and that's the point a lot of work went into it and it's definitely going to be probably my favorite video <laughs> That that is like I can't wait to show you. By the way, that video. Since we, we, when we gonna talk about it, you guys will see it probably. But yeah, as I said, link is already in the description. But yeah, uh, to be perfectly honest, now since you're seeing like your channel grow, do you happy about your community and all of the all of the things that you have on your YouTube channel and like in SWOT or in general that because you have a guild in there and everything. I've I've always been happy with my community. I'm just glad that it's constantly growing. It, honestly, there are new people coming to my channel, channel all the time. New people coming to streams. New people commenting, and just new people for like everything. And it's awesome. It's always awesome to expand. And then you you see like your regulars 
the people who've been there from the very beginning, the people who've been there since the middle. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, those people come, you hang out with those people and you enjoy talking to those people. Um, and it's, it's just nice to actually recognize names, people that come back, people that contribute to you, people that have followed you. Um, yeah. There basically. is pretty much like uh, where we can talk about, like, uh, if we can compare like the two channels, like mine and Sam's, we I'm not even near to Sam's level, but we still have like same subscribers that really enjoy. Like I see in comments, like if they t this two guys make a video together, that's just blow my dream. Like okay, I guess let's just go do a worth it video. I know it's a pack opening, but you guys seeing this video right now, and this is like a totally different con concept. And this is pretty much where you can see like an open Peter and an open Sam to yep. like opened up like all of the topics. Uh, and one last thing about the YouTube and let's just go for a funny one for last time. What was go your on. favorite and your worst comment that you saw on your YouTube channel that you remember the most? Uh, okay, so first off, favorite comments come from um, people like Shadowbrook. And um, you've probably seen her in your comment section too. And um, she leaves awesome comments. She's just a really fun person to speak to and she loves like everything. She never has a bad thing to say, which I'm not trying to say people should wrap, wrap me around in Cornwall, not in the slightest because I, I love criticism. People can criticize me in any way they want to. And um, yeah. bear in mind, there is a line there and I will bite back. So just- you know, <laughs> I know, I um, know that. On the side of like the worst comments, whew, wow. So, so like, are we going into worst or are we going into stupid? Because I have categories for these. Okay, like, you let, know. let's let's go for <laughs> stupid and the worst. Oh God, okay, stupid comments. So the stupid comments come from people, and I don't know, how to, um, but they come from people who come into your video blind, okay? So these are people who are clearly, who have clearly not watched your video. Okay, so they'll comment on something. And, and where you, server where, are you from? I know that questions. I know, <laughs> maybe but... not questions like that. That's fine. Yeah, I'll tolerate that. And um, but people come into the video, they'll comment about something like, "No, this is wrong. This is wrong. That's wrong. You should be doing this." Blah 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 blah. Right. And then <laughs> you go to them and you go, "You obviously didn't watch the video because if you go to three minutes and seven seconds in, you'll see me discussing this exact thing. And if you couldn't make it three minutes into the video, then." opinion on this video to me is worth nothing okay because you have to watch you have to watch the video right you in its entirety to make sure that you covered everything you didn't miss a single thing before you comment about something that is involved in the video so it's like if i start off a video talking about packs and then i also end it on packs then you have to watch the entire video to be able to comment on what i said like you know it's yeah. like the very first thing i could say is I love packs and then you immediately go to the comment section and be like i can't believe that you love packs and then you dislike and then you leave second sentence was me saying i will never say that ever again you know it, it could be anything like that i suppose now when it comes to worst comments um i'm not really sure what you would consider like a worst comment um like probably saying someone like really really insult you about for example like uh let's just say the wild korean explained or uh, let's just go for the server merges that they, they totally disagree about it because they have a different opinion and they, they call you stupid for no reason or whatever like this kind of level or even the higher level of idiot or worst comments right so it's like this right if somebody comes to a server merges video and they disagree that's fine i'm okay with that i don't consider it a bad comment I, I would, if anything, consider it a good comment because they disagreed, they spoke, but contributed to the discussion and the topic because it would it would be pointless if everybody came to it and was like, yes, I agree, yes, I agree, yes, I agree, yes, I agree. It's good for people to come to the video and be like, actually, no, I disagree. Now, I guess we could say that those are the worst comments in a sense. So let's say somebody comes to the server measures and just comments saying, I disagree. I would say that's a bad comment in the respect of you didn't actually state why and <laughs> why is very important and now it's okay to go somewhere and say i don't like this okay i disagree but saying why is very very important so it should be i disagree because okay you said this my response is that you know i disagree for this reason i think you're being biased you know does kind of things you, you have to expand on your comment 
Like you can't just come to a video and be like, this is bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you have to, yeah. I know I say this word a lot, but structure, you have to structure <laughs> your comment in a way that makes sense, in a, in a way that is relevant to the topic. So mm -hmm. it's like, for example, I wouldn't go to like a Liv's stream or something like, hey, this is a bad stream and then leave because she's just gonna be sat there like, ah, oh, well, I, I didn't really like that person saying that. And I feel even worse now because I don't even know why, right? Yes. But if I'd have stayed there and I'd have said, this is a bad stream because you have blonde hair, right? Mm -hmm. Then she'd have laughed, right? Because then she'd have known, right? She'd have known that either I'm a troll or I'm just jerking around. But the why is very important. It's always very important. Even if I'd have said something like, this is a bad stream because you keep swearing. <laughs> That, that could very legitimately, you know, cause somebody to say this is a bad stream, but that's their opinion and that's fine because you can easily just say to them in response, well, this is my stream and I swear on my stream because I am me and I will not change me for you. Like that's kind of how it works, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Relay makes. with each other. Work with each other here, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't be difficult. <laughs> It to totally makes sense. We're not going to change it to anyone. We're just going to be ourselves. People always ask me like, I'm, I'm just going to go for, for example, my worst comments since we're talking about this. And I'm always in the discussion videos talking about certain topics before I'm going into the point. And already, like the second comments, three minutes I'm watching, get to the fucking point right now. Like, okay, just watch like more five minutes. If you're not patient to that, just, okay, go watch another video or, or just just skip it or something like that not shout me in the comments like just get to the in point so that makes no sense I'm, I'm usually getting these comments out of, but other than that like nice comments are also getting tons especially i'm getting on live streams like a lot of people are coming in here especially like we know one both of us together like patricia obviously and uh, yep, yep. and uh, Jay and uh, Barma. I don't know his name on on YouTube. God, uh, uh, yeah, and so on and on. I can go for on and on with the list, but I'm I'm not going to because there is a like I can list up like a thousand, and Sam's like almost two thousand who are watching their videos, but we're not going into that. So that. Uh, that was like all the YouTube questions and things like that. Now I am just wanted to go in to some rapid fire questions. These are just going to be rapid fires. Okay. So, favorite story? It's going to have to be joint. Um, Jedi Knight, Sith Warrior. Okay, favorite class? Assassin. Favorite planet? Uh, I cannot hear you. Ah, oh, that's a tough one. You got me. Um, ah, God damn it. Let's go, Valdron. Uh, I'm picking Alderaan for like view wise as well. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yep, yep, yep. That, that, that is uh, co op or solo? Co op. Best achievement, like actual achievement, have you done in Star Wars The Old Republic? Get crushing. Okay, that is a nice one. Favorite item that you have in the game? Hmm, interesting. My current mount, which I got from a TFR command crate, it's called the Ferocian Cruiser. <laughs> Love it. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, I definitely wanted to get that one. Uh, favorite armor set? Daphimir Shaman, baby. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, and the last one is, what are you going to do when you're going to hit 20,000 subscribers? I'm going to do another backflip. Um, on stream. <laughs> Rest in peace, another light bolt then. <laughs> Oh my god, it's, it's going to be terrible. I'm going to do the bath flip. It's going to hit the lamp. The lamp's going to hit the ceiling. Uh, my head is going to hit the floor. I'm probably going to break my neck. I don't know. It's, it's all just going to go to shit, but it's going to be okay because I've got 20k subs. Indeed. <laughs> and and you're just going to go with all stretches and things like that in there, and you're just going to continue streaming. Like, I'm okay, guys. 
Let's go in. Don't worry. Do, we're we're going to do the stream in the dark. We're going to order another pizza. It's going to be great, guys. <laughs> who wants free games, guys? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> exactly. So, guys, that was it for Behind the Scenes with Sam. Again, Sam, thank you guys so much for joining the first one. It was a pleasure to be, like, the first special guest here on uh, on this, like, Behind the Scenes, like, interview slash Q&A slash speculation slash, like, talking session with Samuel. And, uh, yeah. Just some will do. I know. Mr. Pizza. I know I can call you Sammy Boy if you want. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. We're not going to go into this, guys. This is behind Depends the scenes. Depends on how much like... I've had to drink first. Yeah. We're not going to go like real behind the scenes, guys. But thank you, Sam, so much for joining. Any no last words that you wanted to say? I guess thank you for having me here. I think what you're doing with this video and what you plan to do with it is a excellent idea. I think everybody watching is going to enjoy these videos, not because of the people in them, just because of what they are and their purpose and what they are going to achieve. And that's just to get to know people within the community. So yes, good on you for doing it. Thank you so much for that. And yeah, keep doing what you're doing, guys. And as usually Sam saying it, I'll catch you guys on the next one. See you guys later. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. But anyways, thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Sam, so much for watching. Or oh, watching? Oh, for fuck's sake, I need to do this again. So thank <laughs> oh, I'm starting to getting so tired, mate. I talk too much. No, oh, it's okay.